everybody. And we're live. We are live. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. You dropped that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's a beautiful day today. Episode 15, Jump Street Podcast. I'm your host, Austin Paz. I'm Billy. <laughs> Billy what? Billy O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> Let him know. Okay, so everyone, thanks for coming. Invite your friends. We have As a great always. show. Yep, we got a good show lined up. A very special guest. Ooh, 48 people so far. Another international guest. Yes. But our first guest from Australia. This is the furthest guest we've had so far. From down and there. From down and there. As they say. <laughs> we should probably keep our Australian accents to a minimum because they're so bad and mm. and our guest is going to laugh at us. Well, we got to we gotta do at least one like obnoxious okay. American well, thing. Well, yeah. We can't go crazy with it, but <laughs> I think we're permitted at least one or two. Shout out. Let's see we, who we got in the house. Aaron, Andy. Oh shit, Justin, salute to you, Miguel, Josiah, Blee, Duncan. See you every week, Duncan. Thanks for coming out again tonight. Yeah. Mr. Self Destruct, Adam Cola. Cola. Adam oh, Zer. Shout out to everyone watching right now. Yep. And uh, we have a very special show for you tonight. Yeah, very special show, very special guest. Uh, really lucked out with this one. Yeah, we did. Um, first, I guess we'd like to thank our Patreon supporters this week. Thank you to Matt Plasenia and Fabian. It's just Fabian. Fabian. There's, there's no last name. It's just Fabian. Awesome. So shout out shout to you out. guys. Thank, Thank you, guys. you so much for your support. Very much appreciated. And every week we have a iTunes review of the week. As always, we ask you guys to follow us on iTunes. Um, give us a five star rating and leave us a comment. Who did it this week? Uh, this week we have a comment, um, a review from Olive Douglas. And Olive Douglas says, this is such a positive thing in so many ways. Keep it up. P.S. Billy is very handsome. <laughs> Whoa, thank you very much, Alan Douglas. I appreciate that. <laughs> he is a handsome guy. We're lucky to have a handsome oh, handsome host. Stop. I'm going <laughs> to blush. Come on. You can't have me blushing. It's episode 15, a very special episode. Very special. Yeah. Special guest. And also, we want to shout out, it's a, it's a birthday weekend to one of our former guests, yeah. Ryan Jacklone. It's his 40th, him and his twin brother, Gianni, mm -hmm. and they're in LA celebrating that right now. So If you haven't yet, hit up his uh, Facebook, yep. his Instagram Blow Let him know him happy birthday. Yeah, blow him up. Because mm -hmm. he, he loved it when everyone uh, was uh, talking about it when he was on the show. Yep. He was like, I haven't had this in so long. Yeah. <laughs> so hit him up, blow him up. Let him know. Tell him happy birthday. Yep. Shout out, Ryan. Happy birthday. And shout out to Gianni. And um, yeah, ha welcome to level four. <laughs> level four. As, as, he Dave, he, as yeah. Dave Ortega says. <laughs> he finally earned his... He's on uh, level four now. He earned his lighters. <laughs> yeah. The lighters. Oh, that's right. He's getting his <laughs> lighters lighter from, <laughs> from Dave. So that's it. Dave Ortega... Got to get him his lighter collection. That was quick. That was like that was was literally last week. Yeah. You were like, oh, when does he turn 40? He's like, mm -hmm. I don't know, probably soon. Yeah. And it was a week later. The next episode. Yeah. Crazy. Um, we have our WTF of the week. And this week we have Charlie Petit, uh, courtesy of Inline Skate Shop, the clip. Um, is, is it Pettit? Pettit. Petit. <laughs> I don't know. It depends, depends where he's from. I don't know where he's from. Mm. So Pettit, Petit. If he's French, it might be. Petite. We always have this thing with the with the last names uh, every episode. <laughs> oh, this is crazy! Boom, roll, souls. <laughs> this is what drones were meant for. With shots like this, yeah, right. Boom, bring it to the skate game. He comes off like, yeah, was that all right? Jeez, just look at that drop. A nut on that would have been really bad. That would have been oh. a that would have been a dangler. Just hanging. That would have been a dangler. Yeah, so shout out to Charlie Pettit, uh, Petit. Um, that was awesome. <laughs> Petit. That was awesome. <laughs> and uh, Kurt, that, that uh, clip came way of Inline Skate Shop. So. Yeah, shout out Inline Skate Shop for mm -hmm. hosting the clip. Um, I also wanted to give a quick shout out to um, the Blade Havasu weekend trip just got announced the other day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking about it because personally I've been going there the last like three years. Yeah, it's in it's, Arizona. Honestly, I don't even know about this. So tell me about this. Yeah. So hold on, let me run the, the thing real quick. So this park is insane. It's a, a weekend blading camping trip in uh, Lake Havasu City in Arizona. And it's like, if you're on the West Coast, it's perfectly centralized between like Vegas, Phoenix, hmm. uh, Southern California area. It's like only a few hours from all those places. But it's like beautiful right on the water. Amazing. It's like one of the best skate parks I ever skated. Yeah. And uh, they get a nice little crew out every year, maybe like 20, 30 people or so. And they do a little camping, uh, skating for like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, super cool. I went like the last three years, I think, maybe two years. Now, how long has it been going on? Um, it's the third, uh, fifth year. Yeah. Oh, wow. The V, the five. Hmm. Fifth year. So, yeah, they've been doing that a lot. Uh, shout out to Andrew Scherf from Phoenix. He's the one who organizes it every year. So if you're around February 23rd, 24th, um, even if you're not on the West Coast, like I've been flying out from New York 
for yeah. three years. So even if you're not on the West Coast, be sure to check that out. Sick. And there's a there's a Facebook group on that too. This if is my you fir- are, first time hearing about it. Yeah, if you are interested, um, there is a Facebook group. Just look it up. I forget what the name of it's called, but you can be a part of the Facebook group, and that way you're updated on everything that you need to know about the Lake Havasu trip. Cool. And uh, yeah, before we get to our special guest, we just wanted to remind you guys, please follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, subscribe, like, go to our YouTube page, give that a subscribe as well. We're trying to get that up as many as we can. And as always, go to our iTunes. Our yeah, leave us a we were trying to get to 150 five-star reviews. Where we're are we at? at? Uh, had it on the thing. Let me see. Uh, we're at 141. We need nine more. 141? Yeah, 141. We need nine more. Okay, so anyone who's listened to this... We if, need nine if, of you guys. If you haven't left us a, us a review, maybe or after just, this or, or just hit the five star, one or, or the or other. Or just hit the five star. One or the other. We'll, and th- we'll take it all. Yeah, and uh, so that'd be cool. And we also did a little... Uh, we went bowling today with our guest. We did. And uh, we had a little story, so be sure to follow us on Instagram so you can catch up on these things on our story. Right. You got to see these things, man. Yeah. Our it's, guest got a place to spare. It's winter in New York, so you got to be creative with the things <laughs> you want to do to have fun. Because you don't want to be outside, so you got to do things like, you know, you go to the movies, you go bowling, <laughs> you find a, you know, pool a, hall, a pool hall, like that, or, yeah, yeah. arcade. So yeah, that's what we did. Um, so should we give it up to our guests? I think we should. Okay, there we go. Yeah, and we have all the way from Australia. The moment you've all been waiting for. It's Gav Drum. <laughs> <laughs> Super stoked to have you in town, man. Well, Welcome to, to the show. Yeah, eating pizza. Eat, how's the pizza today? Great. <laughs> Grandma <laughs> slice was fantastic. Okay, was, it the be- was it one of the top pizzas you ever had? Uh, well, pizza in Melbourne's pretty good. Is it? But, yeah. No. It's very good. It's very good. You it's me? different different style, too. Oh, okay, I didn't know New that. York slice is good. I don't think I had pizza at all when I was in Melbourne. Oh, really? I don't think so. I usually try to stay away from pizza when I'm outside of New York. I could understand York. that. <laughs> pizza's so good. Too. Usually I try to, yeah. But uh, we're glad you were able to enjoy our grandma slice yes. from Via Ponte, a local Staten Island joint. Shout out if you guys want to sponsor any episodes. We've been <laughs> supporting you guys we pretty don't, hard. We don't have a pizza sponsor yet. Yeah, no. We need a pizza sponsor and a beer sponsor. Well, dang, man. Nice mug. I've been seeing you around <laughs> the States forever. Like what we, like Chicago, California for like years now. Yeah. Like, like long time. Yeah. But uh, what was like, uh, I remember you telling me about like, your first trip to the States was like Texas or something like that. Texas, first time skating was Texas 2006, I believe. Hmm. When 2006. When Ryan came second in Hoedown and got best trick. That was... 2006. Was that... Yeah. No, that was the year before I went. Because oh, yeah. the year I went, it was like the... I guess like the, the LG. One? The LG. No, was it the last one? I don't know. It was the year they had the LG comp too. Yeah. Like right afterwards. You weren't there for that, were you? No. Oh, because Ryan... Was, there Ryan, was an LG comp. Oh, maybe because Ryan yeah. was there. I remember, maybe I just didn't know who you were then. Yeah, actually, yeah. Quite possible. I probably just didn't yeah. know who you were. Yeah. <laughs> but that's where your first trip is nice to, to Texas you. out of all. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> so what did what, you do? You were there for Hoedown, strictly for Hoedown? Um, that time, it was just like three months running around America skating. So... We were in Texas for a while, and then I went and saw family. My grandma lives in New Mexico. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. Damn. My mom's side's American. Mom was born in Texas. So. Oh, shit. Your mom doesn't have the accent? The Australian accent? Uh, depends who you ask. Americans say she's got an Australian accent. Oh, but, she's, like, yeah. she's like in between, kind of? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that your mom was from Texas. That's crazy. Yeah. And dad's from Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. First generation. And they met Australian. in Australia? Yeah. Oh, okay, crazy. Yeah. So you're, yeah. you're the first generation Australian. Yeah. Crazy. So there's, where were we? Texas and then San Francisco for a little bit. But I was just skating around, hanging out with people. Mm-hmm. No real agenda for it. Like, yeah, who, like, like who are you going about with in those times? Like it was, <coughs> it was it. I was kind of just changing it up, I guess. But the Aussies that were out were Ryan, Arnold, um, Ben Granero. And Craig Brocklehurst. Brocklehurst. Oh, Craig went out there. <laughs> <That's sick. laughs> every time What's you're up, here, every, every time you're here, you're like, uh, you're here for a while. I guess you make the trip worth it, right? Yeah. Come from so far away. Yeah. Yeah. If you come halfway around the world, you're going to, you're going to want to stay for a bit. Yeah. When I was in Australia, I was like, we were there for like three and a half weeks and I was like, that's not enough time. <laughs> really? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So yeah. I can Probably imagine doing America. Probably takes a few days to even get used to the sleep schedule. 
I don't even remember. Don't but there's yeah. just so much like outside of just like the two cities that I went to anyway. There's just the whole other country out there yeah. to see, you know? Same thing with America. You can't like, you know, LA, San Francisco, like you were in the Midwest, like yeah, there's so New York much. too. There's like yeah. Miami and shit. So yeah. it's and a I lot of land. I feel like I haven't seen most of it, you know? Yeah, probably yeah. not. Definitely. Yeah. It's a lot to it. Have you ever driven yeah. across co- the country or are you always flown places? Flown. We drove, I drove to SF from LA. That's a, yeah. the furthest. I've never yeah. even done that drive. Route one on the coast. Yeah. It's pretty good. Oh, nice you, drive, right? Oh, you did that one? Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. That's like Super cool. the drive to do, right? Yeah. It's like, it like makes the drive twice as long, but it's oh, like does it? really nice. How yeah. many hours is that? Uh, like if you, if you drive the coast, like if you drive on like the five LA to SF, it's like five, six hours. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's like without that, it's like 12, 13. Oh like shit. If you take the coast. It's like yeah. double or more. Yeah. Because That's it's just, <laughs> it's like similar, it feels similar to that South coast drive you did in Australia. Down to twelve apostles. Yeah, I don't even remember how long that was. Yeah, it's like when you're in like a new place, like oh everything's cool. Like you don't notice yeah, that yeah, it's like yeah. five six hours have passed. Yeah. What are the twelve apostles? Um, it's just a formation of erosion on the coast, on the south coast. Is that right there? <laughs> that's, the, that's Thomas right Those there. Those things. <laughs> yeah. Off frame, that's we have a picture yeah. that I took there yeah. from twelve apostles. I forgot that I was even there. Yeah, I should have put that. I should have moved that that's up. That's a pretty the cool Australia name. Photo. Yeah. It's a pretty like, apostles. It's pretty like metal. Name. Well, I think it used to be twelve, and it's not anymore, right? No, there's like it used to be twelve of those things, but then like it, it eroded a lot of them away over time. So mm. there's only like I don't know how many are left now. I have no idea. But <laughs> I remember looking it up, and there's not even twelve anymore. Yeah, six apostles. Six apostles. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Dang. It's gonna um, be no apostles soon. So you grew up in Melbourne, and you yes, lived in Sydney. I guess most people know you for your Sydney skating, right? Because you, I, yeah, I guess so. Was there like a filmer in Melbourne, like how we you have Dom in Sydney? No, it's just the crew. I mean, there've, there's been people over the years for sure, mm-hmm. but um, it was me, Robbie Pitts, homie Jared Thack. You met Jared, I believe. Did I? I think so. In Melbourne. Yeah, and. Just various other people that have, mm-hmm. you know, come and gone. Mm-hmm. And then the whole crew, like Melbourne's got a lot of skaters. So, Is it big there now? Like the yeah, it's pretty It's pretty big and pretty healthy. There's like regular skate meets and weekly skate park sessions. I feel, like we're the, the, I feel like we're the only place that doesn't really have like a, a dedicated skate night. Staten? Or New York. No, really? New York had like... They, well, they have they Thursday got, night yeah. skate, but that's like a... Does that count? I guess that does. Count. It's like run by like a re- it's like a rec blading thing. thing, but I guess well, it's like a hybrid thing now. <laughs> okay, yeah. we have one. Yeah, it's I'm stupid. One cool thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> one thing we had growing up was uh, Tim Ward started a website, MelbourneSkateCrew.com, and then from that he would do monthly street skates. And I don't when know, was this? This was like 2003 or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. But I didn't even know he like, was still involved at that time. Well, he just decided to do this thing. And then, oh, I don't know, Tim's doing that. And everyone's like, uh, like a street session once a month with everyone that rollerblades. Mm-hmm. Like, it was sweet. We just meet somewhere, kind of like IMYTA, but without a competition. Yeah. You know, just mm-hmm. like big street skates. And it would get to like 60 to 80 people. Some, that was in Melbourne sometimes. or Sydney? Melbourne. Oh, that's cool. He's Dude. from Melbourne? Yeah. He's Dude. from Melton, a town like 40 minutes west, I think. Mm but melbourne he was like one of the few guys that was like able to <laughs> rip, rip vert and like still 360 top sole down rails yeah and yeah everything dude remember that one trick he was doing it was like years ago that like disaster 360 top sole Yo, like one uh, competition yeah, yeah, yeah. on the scariest <laughs> on rail, rail ever oh my god yeah. it, was it was stale like, it was stale 360 top sole, right how big, far was like a it flat. 100 yeah. feet at least <laughs> it was at <laughs> least 100 feet. Yeah. A quick six yeah. stale three top sole. Yeah, he was. There Wild. was. There was a even Matt Salerno was both good at street and and he yeah. kept Park. landing it, but he, like he yeah. kept locking it, but he couldn't yeah, he couldn't roll, roll away. away. Oh my! That was be- he locked it every time. I which wish. you don't want to miss locking that yeah. trick on that Absol- particular oh obstacle. God, absolutely not. It was huge. <laughs> yeah, a lot of beast skaters come out came out of uh, Australia. I would like to find that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, still to this oh, day, yeah. but like so many, so many legends. Yeah, it's Australia. such a rich, rich Tim Moore, history. Tom Fry, Cesar Mora. Uh, it's cool. it's yeah, yeah so you, can't, you can't even like Scotty. Yeah, well, yeah fucking, there's like the um, um, Justin Buchanan, and Ian Moore, and then there's yeah. Blake Dennis and oh, Josh yeah. Clark and forget Sam about Fogarty that. And, yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. all those guys. And, uh, and then the people that didn't, the people don't know. Was it to- well. Tobias? It was Toby. Toby. Heslop. Heslop, yeah. Toby Heslop, mm. yeah. Yeah, he got, I got... Every issue of Daily Bread off him, off eBay. <laughs> Every Three. single one? Oh, recently? 
No, a couple of years ago. You have every issue. Every issue. Yeah. You probably laughed at my magazine collection. Like, put. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was no, selling- dude, the Staten Island publication. Oh, yeah, you like that one? one? Yeah. I might put that on resale. So, yeah. He was selling it. He was selling it as like a whole unit. Like, yeah. Every one. How every- much was he selling it for? How much I think I ended up buying it for like three hundred bucks. <laughs> oh what? shit! Three fifty or something. Dude, that's a steal. It, I could. I just, a massive I just, stack. I just started bidding too early. Like I would have got, <laughs> got it so much cheaper. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think he, he had hyped. he had more, and this is like his, like crustiest version, you know, like ones that people have looked at and stuff. But still, he may have like a mint, really mint collection somewhere. If yeah. if you if you have like a, a like a the whole daily bread box, <laughs> and then have like the VG one also, like mm. you're fucking like in pristine. Gold. Yeah. yeah, not even yeah. like yeah pristine, obviously, but like just to have like the whole shit. Like yeah. you have a bookshelf in your your apartment and it's just like all the daily breads and right yeah. on top of it all the vgs that'd, that'd be, be great VHS the two two most solid documentation yeah like of series skating kind of. yeah in yeah. the culture totally mm-hmm. like, yeah it's daily bread so lasted long. what i mean how many years what was the first year like 94 maybe more 93 or something? 92 is the first issue oh is it yeah and, and, that, and there's like a tom fry interview and a cosmo in the, in the first one yeah and a, uh, tim door who ran Cosmo? There's an interview with him. No there. way! Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. It was like full of Aussies from issue one. Yeah, crazy. well, Australians were fucking huge back then too in skating. Yeah, it was so crazy reading those issues too. Like looking back, um, issue one, they were it was like Angie being being like, "Hey, we like to do this thing on these skates. Like we like to do creative shit with them. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anyone else out there in the world?" That does this. <laughs> if, if there is write this address and like you know issue two they're like there's people that's how you had to like, do it it's like yeah, yeah it's like guerrilla like marketing yeah. back then yeah and they were just like oh my god there's <laughs> there's other people around the world that do this let's band together and like lobby rollerblade to try and make a skate that's not gonna break you know yeah it's like really crazy it's crazy to think about it back then how it just started from nothing kind of mm. like how is that what they did they, they lobbied to roll that was i remember reading it in one of them she was like you know, if we all get together, we can maybe show that we have numbers. And if you make a skate for us, like, wow, you'll sell it. That was in one of the know? Daily Breads? Yeah. And boy, were they That's right. Nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Back then. You yeah. should, you should like, screenshot that article and post it up. Yeah. It'd be fucking sick to see, just to have yeah. somewhere. I would put up more, but I I don't want to burn the bit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's not my hard work. You yeah. Know? No, but still, just so, yeah, just so people could read it. Because no one, how many people have access? I think the first few issues of Daily Bread are online. Now, like recently, up yeah, the past couple someone months, someone has them. Someone has them, scanned. and they're pretty good scans. Yeah they're, yeah, they're pretty legit. When I was looking for the Dave Ortega stuff last week, I saw there was a few of them. Like the first like seven issues, at least, are up there. I've got a Dave Ortega Daily Bread photo that I scanned in. That's like Bubble Banks. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh shit! I should when I get home. Yeah, everybody knows that the. Bu- I didn't know the Bubble Banks was such a popular spot. I didn't know so many people knew about them. I was surprised yeah. by that too when he was selling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it makes sense because it's you know the banks were so popular. People probably thought that that was like right next to the Brooklyn Banks. Like, it was probably yeah. part of it, because it was, like, brick banks, you know, like, yeah. in New York. Yeah. We can see that. And people yeah. probably go to the Brooklyn Bay, it's like, where are the bubble banks? And then, <laughs> where are the bubble banks? <laughs> Everyone turns into Justin Brosco out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen Stop him at Justin. all. You haven't seen him at all since you've been here, have you? No. no. Oh, shit. I Just, mean, I'm here so such so a short quick. time. Yeah, but still. He lives with Torres, I mean, kind of. Oh, yeah. true. So, but, cool. But he, Justin's, like, long on a lot of time. Yeah, he does his thing. <laughs> Were you uh, influenced by, like, what year did you start skating? 94, maybe. Oh, so a lo- long time. So who's like... But, I mean, I was skating for a long time without like, knowing anything about, like... And was, how did you get eight. into it then if I you didn't know that, anything? Uh, I think... I started when I was eight, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my first skates were for my eighth birthday. Oh, and, shit. Yeah. But before that, I think my dad took me to a skate rink with quad skates and I think mm. apparently I just pestered him every week. Like, we did that <laughs> fun thing that one time, and every weekend rolls uh-huh. around, I'm like, let's go skate. <laughs> when was the last time you rode quad skates? Hey? When was the last time you rode quad skates? Uh, this year, actually. Oh, I went you? to, like, I went to, uh, like, it was the Shreddageddon. Uh, it was, like, this <laughs> ball skating. Yeah. And I just, like, set up a pair of old Baileys with some Damn. quad trucks. How and was had it? to roll around. It was all right. The Shreddageddon is, like, like, a quad skate thing? Hey? What, what is the Shreddageddon? Shreddageddon is just like uh, Chicks in Bowls, I think is the the name of it, mm-hmm. the group. And it's just an event they do mm-hmm. where they like come hang out, skate, learn how to skate. And, you know, that's cool. They're a cool bunch of people. They got big yeah. numbers now. Yeah. Yeah. Is it big down there? Yeah, absolutely. I think the Melbourne team's the best derby team in, in I don't know, they win a lot of 
Mm-hmm. They train Actually, with the no, fucking kangaroos, like the probably. The they fucking train with the kangaroos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They train with yeah. the rugby team. <laughs> yeah, the rugby yeah. team. Yeah. The brolic ass kangaroos. Right. Try to knock them over. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you start? Um, after starting ninety four, when did you start like knowing or seeing something or meeting the older? Guys yeah, since you that, didn't know like anything uh, about it when you started, how did that fucking? So how in, did you connect with other people and stuff? I think I got in like grade six, which is the final year of what you guys call grade school for us it was primary school mm-hmm. and um yeah i would have been like 12 and i started i my next door neighbor basically my next door neighbor got me into it after uh he used to play hockey so he had a kicker out the front of the house and we just like run around mm-hmm. and um yeah then i think when i got when i first year of high school i met um other people that skated, you know, mm-hmm. and I was doing like mizus and calling them fish bones. And like, <laughs> you had no idea what out. was going yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, and then eventually I met Rob Robbie Pitts, and then basically through him and the other guys, I was like, oh, there's like a culture with this thing. Like mm-hmm. there's people that do this and do it well, and like, yeah, and that that was like. Like brain fever going to just come out. At that oh, it time. took that long. Yeah. Holy so shit. I'd I'd seen stuff before that, but I was just like, I just didn't care to know that the guy on the screen like existed. Right. You know? That there was more to it than just a trick. It was like, yeah. It's a person. Yeah. So I had like I went to a skate shop and got an inline skate mag, which had like AJ Jackson and just like, mm-hmm. you know a mm-hmm. bunch of people. Um, and then I remember seeing Crank Two in the skate shop on the screen. Which Crank is, Two. Yeah, What's which that? is a Spencer Franks film. He was a guy from Melbourne, I believe. Um, he shot a bunch of 16 mil videos. He had uh, One Love, which was like... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then... And a bunch of stuff. Like, a few Australian stuff. Crank, Crank 2. Um, Back in the Day was another video. Oh, yeah, yeah sick. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And there's like a bunch of... In those videos, there's like a bunch of B-Bell footage in Mel- Skating Street in Melbourne. Really? Or like that. Yeah. Wow. Really cool. <coughs> Who did you... Uh, <clears throat> like... When did you start skating with people, or did you even start skating with like bigger names back then, back in the day then? Yeah, in but Elmer? but I it was always I was always on the back foot. Like I'd meet the people, and then someone would be like, "Hey, that's yeah, yeah." Well, you were also famous. What, I guess you were like way younger too than yeah. everyone, right? Like I met Manuel Blairis because he used to come down to the local skate park, and I remember getting an, his him to autograph my skate um, because he taught me how to kind grind the rail. Oh shit, did he? And then someone was like, "That's Manuel Blairis. Like he's." Uh, he's got a pro walk. He's, he's yeah, he's got a pro skate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, oh. That's cool. Sick. He uh did uh like did all these skate parks have vert ramps or something back then? Because there's so many crazy yeah, vert skaters and like you would never see in the States anyway, like vert ramps anywhere. Yeah. You got Aton Kramer in yeah, New York. Which didn't doesn't make any sense somehow. But <laughs> yeah, we have Aton Kramer, but like you guys yeah. had so many vert yeah. skaters. Yeah. Almost all the pros were vert skaters. They all could Scott Emanuel. Yeah. Tim like Moore. if you talk to Scott, he's like uh, he's a street skater but like really yeah he just was you know street skating wasn't gonna win like, contests and stuff well yeah. get you on like warp tour and stuff like that like, mm. you uh, know like they he made a living off it you know so he so, considered he himself loves a street skater good. yeah 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 like if you asked him right does, now yeah he, would, oh, totally. he was just ta- he really? was just talking to me about doing, like doing those... this massive drop row when well he gets I, home. I know he used to skate street but i always pictured him as primarily a vert skater yeah or at least a park at least a park him. skater that's Maybe what that's people all, saw yeah. yeah but he was oh really i didn't even know that yeah he's um he's done some pretty crazy handrails in sydney that's for sure yeah how did you end up meeting? Because Ro- I know Robbie's from Darwin, and you're yeah. from Melbourne, and like that's like how far away is that? Super far away. That's the other side of the country. Right. And that's like a six-hour, five-hour flight or flight, something like yeah. that. Yeah. So, so how did you yeah. guys end up meeting? So his family moved down to Melbourne. He was okay. actually born in a town outside of Melbourne, and then he grew up in Darwin and skated there, and then yeah, came to Melbourne to at the time of starting high school, I think. So. So the perfect timing. Yeah. yeah. And then we had the crew, like probably five skaters that would meet all the time. And we'd just go to, you know, the first school closest to the skate park, you know, and then another school and then like, you know, catch the tram into the city. And then so it began just like running down the streets, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You had that. I had my first street session with Rob. He was like. <laughs> you remember your first street session? Yeah. 
What? Yeah. I went along and I was like, they were doing this like five stair handrail. So you started skating like, ramps oh. first? Yeah. I st- For first, years? Yeah. So Strictly when I... Ramps. Well, yeah. Basically, there was a skating rink that had two half pipes in it. And that's where I used to go. Mm-hmm. It had a quarter pipe, like an eight foot vert quarter pipe attached to the rink. And it was like one of the segments they would do in the what day. The like open it up, let everyone do the thing. And then they had a vert ramp that had holes in the ceiling that people would like air up and grab onto the rafters and disappear. And then like, <laughs> and then a mini ramp about this high, you know, um, also with vert <laughs> and no steep. coping. It was like tin tacked. Oh, that's why it. you don't skate coping. You grew up skating. In the <laughs> <ramp>. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing, probably doing like fakey cartwheels or some shit. Like, <laughs> uh, like, yeah. Yeah. In rack skate. So you did that for years before skating street for quite a while. Yeah. Which, Jeez. Yeah. So I could definitely skate before I learned how to grind. That's for sure. That's a good mm. way to learn though. I, I think most people should learn that. like that anyway. Yeah. 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 That's like a proper way to do that. I feel like a lot of people skip that stage and just start yeah. throwing themselves on ledges and rails and well, somehow manage to falling, yeah. you know, you, you, to have to be on, to know what you're doing on your feet first, you know, of course. Mm-hmm. And anyway, yeah. well, it just, you could tell it develops your whole skating in general. Your whole style yeah. is different. If you know what you're doing before, like you take, you do step one, step two, step three, you can't just go straight to five, six, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can just, there's no foundation right there. You need yeah. that foundation. You gotta build the foundation. Yeah. 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 It's skate easy to flat see when you first skate. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, there you go. Skate flat. Skate flat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then learn how to skate backwards. Well, do, what, do what you want really. But, <laughs> yeah. You know. I remember, having, helps. I remember having a conversation yeah. with somebody, I forget who, it was, it was like somebody who hasn't skated in a, like many years and they were like, I started seeing these kids, they don't even know how to skate backwards, yo, like, <laughs> gotta teach these kids to skate backwards for us. No, so true. He landed fakey and he didn't know what to do and just like would collapse, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, I wasn't, I wasn't that bad, but I was like in that, that group where I like, well, I was playing hockey skating, but I was definitely like more worried about grinding than skating when I first, when you first started, started skating. Yeah, I just wanted to grind everything. Mm-hmm. I was like, what are all the grinds? All right, yeah. What's that grind? What's that? So I wasn't, yeah. Yeah. It, it took me like, I was skating street for all and like maybe three years in is like, I dropped in like my first mini and I felt like flat on my face mm-hmm. and like I was already hitting rails backwards and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. But so I had to develop that. Later. That was a natural for us anyway though. Cause we yeah. had street over right. parks anyway, but I had to develop it, but I eventually ended up getting it like later. Yeah. But yeah, that's <laughs> eventually <laughs> you, 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 you skate fakey now. Yeah, okay. Skate fakie, it's yeah. good to know you can skate fakey now. Not fakey cartwheels though. <laughs> no. Because I heard, I was literally just thinking about how do, how do you do that? Yeah, like, I don't even yeah. know either. It's like at the Did bottom you actually of the vert do those? ramp. Really? Yeah, I, oh, uh, the bottom of the vert ramp, not, not yeah. on the transition. Go fakey and just like, you know, <laughs> so you gotta be like kind of sideways. Yeah. 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 You still got that? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure I can do that. <laughs> we, got, yeah. we got to get a clip of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've never done a backflip on on skates. Like ever, right? Ever. Yeah. I've never. I don't. Like, I mean, I don't. Like, I really want to do it on I a quarter. Do it on my shoes on the ground, but yeah, I really yeah. want to do it on a quarter. Like next time yeah. I go to Woodward, I want to go on the resi and throw bottom it on of the, res- the vert ramp. Bottom of the vert ramp. I don't know. About, I'd rather I'll just. I'd rather just do it on like the middle of the vert ramp or whatever. Yeah. But I know fish like it's so anti. <laughs> <this stuff>. Nope. <laughs> uh, I like doing crazy shit like that. Yeah. But uh, like yeah. always, like those hot flips. You know, like all you gotta do yeah. is kind of just take your hand out, and you're kind of good, and just straighten yourself out though. But I know I could do it. We just I have no balls to just straight try it on a, a quarter pipe. You know, with with no oh, hell heading, no. nothing like no, that. No, but where would you go anything. like a resi? Do it on a resi. Like I feel like I'm pretty confident I could do it. Yeah. I just got to get the balls to, to do it. Have you ever done a backflip on skates? In general, no. Have you? And you said no. no. But have you ever done a front flip? Yeah. Like a Grammy front out flip? Out of a quarter pipe. I mean, out of a bowl. You You've know, done like a Grammy front flips? Not, no. No? Front flip, no. I never done a front I flip. Done a I never front. done a front flip on a trampoline. I can't even do it on a trampoline. It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> like, I fucking suck at that. I think it's one of the hardest things ever to front flip. They are. It's hard, but like. What have you front flipped? You can do it. <laughs> it's super. Ki- like, I know. Have I? I've not done it. Oh, okay. I thought no, you were no. like you were like you never front flip. You crazy? No, because because yeah. you, you were like a, like a little young eight fe- eight year old phenom kid. So when you're like I was that just focusing young, on misty flips. That's just okay. straight misty flips. Yeah. Like when I was you're trying that to young, misty you're everything. Like, yeah, I'll front flip. I don't know. Yeah, it's like but in the nineties, it was all about the misty flips. I was sure. trying to misty everything. Yeah, it's a fair point. Wallet chains and misty flips. Yeah, that's whatever. <laughs> so I, I still can't yeah. fucking front flip. True. I was like. The kid flipping out of the quarter pipe, and Rob was the kid being like, "Uh, there's like, there's switch ups, bro." Like, <laughs> you know, it's like switch Damn, ups. Damn, so Rob, right. Rob was the tech guy. He schooled me in. Yeah. Did he? Yeah, he was on oh, John shit. Elliott tip at that time. Too. And he was hitting the rail, the five stair, and yeah, before you, before you were the next week, I was ready. <laughs> you were ready the next week. Yeah, Damn. a Macchio to five stair, wow. like a square rail on the side of a, on the side of a ledge. That was my first, real. Ready. Wait, so let me hear about your first Macchio. street session ever. 
Because that's oh, yeah. <laughs> crazy that you could you could recall your first street section. Yeah. Session. 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 <laughs> so we rolled maybe five minutes skate from the skate park mm-hmm. to a church. He like lured you over. He was like, let's yeah. get street. <laughs> well, we all meet there. And then it was like, this let's way. go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, I think I first heard of a half pipe and then I heard about two of them joined together, <laughs> like a spine ramp and was like, what? <laughs> and then I heard about a bowl. It, like and pictured it as like a half pipe in 3d sort of right situation and then i heard about a skate park and then yeah eventually they were like uh street skating and it's just like and you're like what <laughs> like everything everything yeah. what, what did you skate yeah. a rail so like, yeah we first? skated skated the this five stair at a church and then directly across the road was a primary school and that had a six stair handrail which we just like gap and Kick. like imagine <laughs> yeah you know? and then like try to yeah try and be like I think I locked that one, you yeah. know, and just yeah. fly by. And then there was a nine stair at the school across the road in the other direction. Your first so, three session was three down rails. Yeah, <laughs> that, that I, like, just looked at, you know. And oh, then, you didn't hit them? Yeah, I just looked at them on the first one. Then I did the, <laughs> the five stair on the first session. And then I was like, mm-hmm. you know, the next one was like, all right, this time I'm going to do the next. I'm going to do the six stair or mm-hmm. the seven. Yeah. And then eventually we'll get to the nine stair. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, those days were the best. Like building it up. Yeah, yeah. But before that, I actually borrowed a friend's Bing Airs, the yellow K twos, mm-hmm. and front sided a little ten stair handrail at the skate park. That, that was that was around the same time, but just before. But yeah. Was that your first trick on a down rail, the front side? Yeah, Bingers? but it was in a skate park, so I. Oh, you know, okay, yeah, yeah. Still, but still, first handrail. Still, you get you get the feeling of you get the feeling, but it's you know like what it is, but it's, yeah, yeah, it's just, just a different environment, I guess. Yeah, it's skate like, park is like a shopping mall. It's like it's all there for you. you yeah, know? yeah, right. yeah. Especially the but way, but it's but it's good to get you comfortable to. Yeah, absolutely. Like you're like, oh, I get the nowadays the I opposite. Now, I'd yeah. rather skate a street, like rails and down ledges with ramps. Like, I'll still skate them, but they're way more scary to me than when you have stairs. Are yeah. you guys the same way? Ooh, I don't know. You rather have a ramp know. on a down rail or a, a stairs? <sighs> depends. Depends. You know, you know, you don't have a preference on it. I, th- I think well, it, stairs it depends the way to how go. steep it is. Why? Like if it's mellow, then it's. I would prefer the. I'll take the. If ramp. it's mellow, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Ramp, right? The ramp. <laughs> ramp. Yeah, the ramp. I hate the ramp. I'd rather have s- stairs all day. Yeah. Really. The ramp's scary because you can wash out on a ramp. Stairs, you just stop and you can just. That's just what I'm saying. Up. But if it's like this, if the incline's like this. It doesn't matter at that point. That doesn't even count. Uh. <laughs> that doesn't even count at that point. It could be anything. It could be grass. It could be yeah. <laughs> it could be butterflies. It doesn't matter. If there's a rail like that with a ramp next to it on the street, I'll probably be trying to use it. Well, there's yeah. like there's like there's like skate parks now where there's a rail and one side is ramp, one side is stairs. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And I always would rather skate the stair side than the ramp side. Really, I don't know. Yeah. I just I, I, that was like a. Pre- I was curious if anyone else had a preference like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean, though. Like you kind of just stop. Like yeah, you, yeah, I get it. Yeah, there's maybe I just had like one bad fall and it just like traumatized me and forever. You, no, well, I get you, probably what yeah. happened. And you you know how to you know how to bail on stairs. You know, yeah, more, you're, you're more comfortable with that. So well, you could just stop. Yeah. Well, that's because you found the easy way to deal with it. Because like a bank, you, you, you can just keep going. You know. Well, you could also like wash out on <laughs> it, or if you land faky and you fall, like yeah. yeah. Especially if you, stairs, land, you if you land like the knuckle caught. at the end, you just like right in that little pocket and you just fucking take oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah well, that that's sucks too. Oof. That's, yeah. That's if you're bad. leaning forward or two, that, yeah. It's yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm a stair guy. Uh, all right. Fair. Maybe that's, that's how that's, I grew up. That's, that's a fair. <laughs> what about, I don't know. I wonder if, I'm curious if like other people have like preferences on that too. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know that was just me. I thought that was like a thing. It could be. Maybe just no one thinks about it. Let us know if you have a thing. <laughs> no one knew it was the stair side. All right, so one person's on my side so far. All right. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um, speaking about like, like your beginning stages of skating, you recently went to Burma. Yeah. And that fucking blading Burma by Don West, that yeah. was my favorite Very grassroots. Well, on, almost skating. my favorite video, probably ever in skating. Yeah, it was really but, really good. Wow. Um, like, tell us what that experience was like because you were able to witness not just people skating in the beginning stages of like their the careers or lives whatever but the sport itself blooming from like almost the bottom up in a whole new environment yeah absolutely what was like all that like that was just it was just so ama- amazing to see how much these kids valued role winning <clears throat> like it just kind of helped like i'd spent the last that was the end of about eight months of traveling around um 
and going to occasional skating things. And then I got to that and was like, like, I don't know, did the way they worked together as a group, they would like roll up and help and like send people down a handrail. Yeah, like, I saw that. You know, yeah. Like hold their hand yeah. and like put them up and send them off. Yeah. <laughs> like, like someone doing like... Uh, <laughs> What is it? Curling or something? Just yeah, 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 yeah. Balls? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's and, funny. <laughs> it's so crazy. And their connection with each other, it's just, and just their environment and stuff. I remember this one time, Matthew Heinemann was skating, a, he was about to do a tree stall at a skate park mm -hmm. and he tried it and everyone just was like, whoa, like mm -hmm. freaked out actually. And I just had no idea why. And then eventually our friend was like, uh, like the spirits are in the trees. And this is the tree in the center of the skate park, which is the place everyone goes to do this. Like, leave the tree alone. You know? oh, and I was shit. like, whoa. I did, like, wow. Okay. Like, I wouldn't even think about else. something like that. Yeah. 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 yeah whoa, so that's crazy. crazy. And, and just the spirit of these dudes. Like, I was trying to, I remember trying to convince them that they didn't need to help push the broken down car down the hill because it's downhill. <laughs> gravity will do that. And they're just no like, way. no. Like, yeah. Hmm. Yeah strong-spirited people yeah you, you know what's funny you were just telling me about that earlier and like if you could because a lot of things i didn't know about it like you were saying uh they didn't let people from the west go there until just recently like four yeah it's been like four, four, four yeah they opened it up to <coughs> sort of tourism in the west about four years ago before that it was it was military rule, kinda, rule. I think. it was yeah it was just run by the military it was like uh -huh. martial law yeah which is out of my world of experience you know yeah that's yeah how did definitely that definitely the biggest culture shock i've ever how did that whole trip come life. along because like i mean i know like you guys had a homie over there that's we what did. it was yeah and was he the one you're just like yo you got to come here for skating it's yeah. like crazy and then it's, you're like let's do something with it yeah basically dom it it fits in with uh dom's professional interests doing documentaries yeah. and filming skating that's kind of a middle ground and something he wants to play more with and develop more mm -hmm. so yeah burma seemed like the spot because the homie from newcastle was living there and it started this skate skate scene from scratch you know yeah that's wild yeah. and it literally is from scratch from scratch did there you was one guy it took him one year to see one roller waiter and then he was like oh this do, might be possible do they not have like internet or something like that to to watch videos and stuff not really <clears throat> they have like uh, no not, connection at all to skating outside it, it depends where you are but um he was telling me about the rates of like um i don't know like computer class in pro in grade school and stuff like that and they definitely like it's hard to get a regular home doesn't have like a computer and stuff like that right nope. yeah no yeah <coughs> um yeah i mean like like we went to someone's home and it was built by them it was uh sticks you know mm -hmm. on a farm and the guy built a handrail for his kid in the stuff. yard yeah was that he the like one laid down concrete and made made oh wow an area to like skate. that yeah was that the one where there was like a, a ramp into like the dirt mm -hmm. that was crazy that was the foam pit yeah, the foam pit. <laughs> yeah. that's <laughs> scary as hell yeah i mean the kids had phones and stuff as well like the kids who were skating did yeah, but I'll it's there's you know, a big say, divide. You yeah. Know. Like what's stopping them from like, I want to know if other people do this and you just stumble upon brain fairy gone or something like that. Yeah. You know? What's well, hard. Like if you see a kid at a skate park now and you see them hyped on rollerblading, where do you tell them to go? Like online. Yeah. There's not a, there's not a very easy source mm -hmm. to school yourself in mm -hmm. on rollerblading. You know, it's true. Yeah. Every, it, used to be, it used to be rolling. <laughs> yeah. It used to be rolling yeah. a long time ago. But, but that's still like internet that yeah. still yeah. either way yeah yeah, so, yeah yeah when I went there to are media there are things B Mag are doing great yeah. right you know mm -hmm. yeah. yeah but like but you said like no not everyone has like the internet I guess yeah and not everyone in the world and same thing when I went to Cuba I was like I know how like internet's limited and stuff out there too and I brought I had one copy left of the truth too like the DVD whatever oh, yeah. I'm like if I find one blader I'm gonna like give it to them so they can like see skating whatever and me and John went skating. And we saw one kid on rollerblades, and I'm like, oh, perfect. I'm going to give him this. It was like a little kid, like a oh, might have been like sweet. seven Dude, year old, so something like sick. that. And I'm like, do you have a DVD player? Like, John talked to him because I didn't speak Spanish, but he's like, you have a DVD player? He's like, yeah, everyone. And we're like, okay, here. It's perfect. Like, watch, your, watch this DVD, whatever. 
So yeah, like I was like maybe really cool. like it'll stem in Cuba from that yeah, or something yeah. like that. Right. I mean, but, um, if it stems to his three friends at school, you know, yeah, yeah, that's like how it started for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and all my friends. So. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, but I just find that like the not to go back on it, but just uh, to complete the thought, like I just felt like the, the 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 Burma thing is like like you said, like such a culture shock. You were saying that like it's illegal to like stay at other people's houses. You have to get a hotel yeah. and. All these other oh, things. Oh yeah, what you do for that? And there's also like you were saying, it's a it's a place of like a lot of like formerly a lot of injustice in the world. Yeah, and it's crazy. It's like a heavy situations. Place. Yeah. yeah, United Nations considers it a, um, a quite an atrocity. Like of, of lots of things that are going on over there. Mm-hmm. But um, I heard it's like one of the most beautiful countries. <coughs> yeah, ever though. Yeah, but yeah. like exactly to have that like go there for like a skate trip is probably like such a trip. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, and I wouldn't be able to see it any other way. Not, right. not the tour we had, you know. Yeah. Um, hanging out with locals. It was authentic. And, yeah, yeah. And we got to see some, <coughs> like, wonders of, uh, ancient wonder of the world that's mm-hmm. with all these temples in Began that yeah. was, like, ancient control center of all of Asia. Of, mm-hmm. You know, that was, that was incredible. I really want to go there, too. Yeah, that's kind yeah. of amazing. <clears throat> um, like, you had, like, didn't you have, like, in, it looked like in, in Bleeding Burma, you had, like... What's up? Anyone in in Burma? In Burma in, in, is anyone in, in Burma watching right now? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody watching? Let us know. Yeah, um, yeah. There's some Myanmar dudes on Facebook. Okay, maybe they'll watch What's this. Up, guys? Yeah. Maybe they'll watch the repeat. Yeah. I don't know what time it is over there right now, but um, it, it looked like there was um, like a monk like blessed you guys to skate. Yeah. Some, what was that about? It was. It was. I didn't fully understand that unless I did, and I just that was it. So we saw. Yeah, it was basically we saw a rail that was sick mm-hmm. at a temple. Mm-hmm. And we were like, Dave, just can we skate this? And he's like, Well, just ask. Dave's your you boy, know? right? From yeah. Newcastle, he said. Yeah. And then we sat down and we asked one guy, and he said, Well, we're gonna have to ask this guy because mm-hmm. he's the he's the guy to ask, basically. And yeah, we just came in, sat down, and just basically just kind of like said hello, got to meet him, you know, explained that we were like well-intentioned by doing mm-hmm. it you know we weren't trying to damage property or anything like that and he's like yeah i see it. i get it kids like to have fun you know sure did anyone speak english um yeah very bad very right? little I, yeah some of the interviews i remember like in the video even it's like really hard to understand anything that they're speaking yeah so yeah <clears throat> did uh I what was your boy's name that. dave dave did he speak dave pitt oh dave Payne. sorry Oh, that's Dave Payne? Another Dave Payne? Another Dave Payne. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also Dave Pitt. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Dave Pitt and Dave Payne. And the other Dave Payne. Why not? <laughs> and Dan, yeah. and Dan. I, I just met him for the first time. Yeah, like, he probably. said he's like my new yeah, homie. Like, Dave's whatever. So sick. Yeah. So rad to me. Yeah, he's a really rad, like, good energy. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait to have a Dave Payne show. Oh, yeah. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, what language do they speak out there? Burmese, Burmese, and he yeah. Dave speak. He's like fluent in Burmese, or he can speak Burmese, Burmese pretty mm. well. Yeah, he was kind of like your translator out there. Yeah, and another guy, local guy that could speak English quite well. Okay, that's good. Yeah, and what do they do for like skates and like skate parts and shit like that? Because you parts? you guys no parts like on like <laughs> wheels and shit. Help they, them out. Help them that's out. That's what I'm saying. Because yeah. you guys like gave them wheels and stuff like that, and they yeah. were like so blessed. Like, what were they riding on? Did you Anything know anything about like they how could. they got? How you get skates in the first place? Dave brought him in. All just them. every time he leaves, he and supplied comes the whole back, country with brings, skates. Well, they they have recreational skates, uh-huh. but, and if you have a slab of, slab of concrete, you can like buy some skates and start a skate rink. And there's a lot of those. It's like mm-hmm. it's really crazy. All these weird skate rink slash skate park things that have mm-hmm. popped up. Those look crazy. Yeah, and um, aside from that, if you want like street skates, um, you have to get them through Dave. That's and crazy. I think there's a homie in Malaysia, Jom Skates, that also helps out. But it's hard to... You can't just send things because they probably won't arrive. Oh, no, shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. You have to bring it. You have to bring <laughs> it. You have to bring it like yeah. it's like your own personal luggage or something like that? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, yeah it'll just someone else. And there's no way to like donate it. to send them shit? Not probably not. Really. Mm. Not really. Yeah. Damn. That's like unfortunate that all yeah. these, like, these places in the world that are limited to what they're able to do... Ooh. Just simply because how the government is set up, you know, they won't let them ship anything out or whatever. Yeah. So I think Cuba is the same way too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, it's, yeah. I don't know enough 
about the politics and history of the country to really yeah well you, just, yeah. Just, just from like but, shit that you were told while you were there or, or whatever you know yeah because <clears throat> that was that was wild seeing like i can imagine what they're skating on and there was like a clip of you or joe or someone giving them a set of wheels and they were like yeah. oh yeah like mm. new wheels to me is, they, is fucking old, amazing uh, amazing for them it's probably yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they were hyped on old wheels <clears throat> A new like, old wheels, right? Yeah, old, old wheels yeah. as well. Anything. I remember being yeah. that kid too back in the day, like before his sponsors yeah. or whatever. Like when you're riding on nubs, and then <laughs> yeah. I remember like Franco used to give me like when he had sponsors, give me his old wheels, and I'm like yes, yeah. <laughs> like you know, totally. That's got to be like such a blessed feeling. How long were you the there for in general? Ten days. Ten, was ten quite days quick. Trip? Yeah, and we drove around about maybe seven hours north and back to seven the, hours. The two though. the two main cities. What are the main cities out there? Um, <laughs> you don't remember? Okay, never mind. Never mind. Mandalay. I was so close to, to Burma when I was in Thailand. We went to like this place and it was, I looked out on the map, like see where we were. And we were like, do like right on the border. I was like, oh, I want to go. <laughs> I know it's obviously not that easy, but we were like yeah. right there. And I'm like, okay. fuck, like I want to go. Because by that time, I also heard that it's like such a Yangon. nice place. That's what it was called. Yang- was it? Yangon. Oh, Yangon. Yeah, yeah. Yangon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What about the food? Food was great. Yeah? Yeah, and they have this whole traditional meal of these, of like, tea leaves and peanuts and things like this that represent certain things in their culture. Mm. And it's, like, quite a... It's like breaking bread, you know? It's just uh, a way they communicate with... It's like a sacrimonious experience. Yeah. 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 Tea leaves and peanuts sound good. I'll have that. Yeah, it was cool. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to have some tea leaves and peanuts after this. Well, that's awesome, man. That, yeah. that was a really rad video. Yeah, I, I felt like, was like I, I wish I would have watched that again because I feel like when I first saw it, I'm like, I have so many questions. Yeah, <laughs> like, I did. That's why I was glad to like speak to you about that. Yeah. And after I don't get to speak to Dom that much, you know. Yeah, true. Yeah, <clears throat> after especially after starting my travels with Ross Kilda and then ending it with that. So that's what like, you did for eight months. You were in Europe, all over Europe, and then ended up there. And China and uh, America, Mexico. What was China like? You were skating in there because we were talking to Dave China last week. Was crazy. It was crazy. It was just a comp, and we skated in the rain for one minute, and <laughs> that was about it. <laughs> yeah, well, and then we, we not ran around for that Shanghai long. for a couple of days. No, that was just like an opportunity that popped up as a competition. Mm. Uh, I think the feast guys were oh, yeah, there, involved. Wasn't there a feast there? Yeah. Yeah, this was a different one, but I think they were building the ramps and do, mm. making the event happen. But I think. I remember going, sitting in the hotel that we were staying at and looking at the drink coasters and they were advertising the same competition that I was at from 2002. And <laughs> they I just had them yeah, for that long? Yeah, they had like a person role wedding. What? Like, yeah, it was really crazy. <laughs> Damn, it's like a picture of like Tom Fry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a soul grind with the Majestic 12s. <laughs> so, yeah, it was crazy. But what we were curious because last, like, last week when we had Dave Ortega on, he was talking about when he was in China and... I don't know, what, I forgot what year that was, 98 uh, or something 90, like that? Yeah. But wow. like we, you never really hear much about skating in China. There was a guy, Hong Chien Kai, or Killer K, and he had John and Shima had him on NIM for a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was also sponsored by Nike SB. <laughs> How? Just in China. China, just, yeah. yeah. And like, he just rock he, shoes? Yeah, he just rock up and like to Asian X Games with like <laughs> what? Nike get up and shit. They were it's confused. Crazy. They were confused out there. They probably thought skateboarding and blading were the same thing. Like how like when you start, like people. I think like, it's. <laughs> I think I think it's more that like the, uh, when it's that small, if you're if you're a skate shop, you just anyone that likes right. to do this. Six, yeah. Gets, Anything that together, anyone that rolls, you know? kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like it's it's it seems like that way with the Thai skaters mm-hmm. when they would come to um, Asian X or mm-hmm. those type of things. Um, yeah, <laughs> like you you've got to be a certain size before you can start like subdividing. You know, mm-hmm. but that's true. What's the deal with Killer Kai? Was he like really sick? Or he he was sick. Yeah? He came to the hoedown in two thousand six. He switched, oh, did he? switched, oh, really? switched Hurricane Top Soul the down row. <laughs> The down row? That's both, a big he down did row. it both ways. Yeah. Whoa. What? Damn. Yeah. Crazy. And he he has a clip maybe in the vicious <laughs> video or nim or something, and he like f- tries to five a double set and lands in UFO cess slide on the, <laughs> and just stays up. 
He just what? he just goes and just like yeah, still standing. I'd be, I'd be done. That was the clip. My knee, <laughs> groin of over. steel, yeah. groin of steel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be able to like pick yourself up from that. Rubber knees. <laughs> yeah, all the mud. One oh, another. Yeah. Shout out Killer Kai. I wonder what he's doing. Oh, Matt, he Matt Henneman's in the chat. Photography, I think. Oh, Matthew. Yeah, Matthew Henneman. How do you say his name? Heineman. Matthew Heineman. Yeah. Matthew. Matthew. Matthew Heineman. Matthew. Shout out Matthew Heineman. We were just yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. He's the man. <laughs> That was sick to see him skating too, because I feel like I haven't seen anything of him in a long time. Yeah, he's yeah. Doing some the mean room. tricks. How, how did that group of you guys hey, come together anyway? Because it was Ross Kilda. You guys just you were you just like anyone want to come with me? I'm I'm doing this trip, I guess. Or um, Dom Dom hit me up about the idea and Joe and said, "Who who do you think can join?" And I said, "Match you like hey, he just yeah, shattered him out there." Yeah, and yeah, he's just such a unique spirit in skating Mm -hmm. and he has like it's almost like a street performance mentality with things like watching him skate the ball at ross kilda it was just like incredible because it's just it's just people who are are at a festival coming to watch the skate thing yeah you know so it's just about having fun basically Mm -hmm. and matthew rocks up looking like he's he's hungover or something covered in dirt <laughs> and they announce him and then he like falls into the bowl pops out the other side front side stalls the fence <laughs> in front of the crowd and like points to this girl <laughs> and like asks to get a kiss gets a kiss from the girl and he's like oh. and just drops back in the bowl no way. and that's like the beginning of the the thing is like what? oh this is just people having fun yeah yeah, he's, yeah it was great lines sort of the mood yeah that's yeah like- exactly yeah it was so cool and then i remember skating around street in copenhagen with him one time and it was just me and him and we stopped off at this spot and i was like oh i want to have a little roll around and he just i remember him just like pulling out a flute and just started playing <laughs> and it was like he was i don't know it was like a little jam session of sorts he was like giving providing a soundtrack to the <laughs> and like inspiration in a way too it was like oh you're playing along shit i gotta think of something <laughs> you know? and then like nothing was really said either it just sort of happened yeah, and then we just moved on. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That's he, he's totally like one in that spirit category of like, yeah. in that Rob G category of just like powerful humans, like yeah. you know, that just yeah. And he got he got, like, so I saw him there. I saw him in China and Joe as well, and then Matthew just stayed in China for for months after that, just like oh, in really? the mountains. Yeah, in the mountains. <laughs> yeah, and I think it was the Burma trip that got him. Out of China, mm. yeah. In the mountains, what was he doing in the mountains? Just playing music, playing the flute, Just playing the yeah. flute. Man. Yeah, he comes from a family of musicians. Hmm. Yeah, he's been doing it longer than anything. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know that. I don't even know him. Yeah, maybe I'll meet him one day. Hopefully, I get to. Yeah, he's a rad dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, hell yeah! Shout out Matthew. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you won the uh, the Bleeding Cup last year. Was it last year? Last, last year, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, was cool. yeah. Not Did, the last one. Because <coughs> um, you're not, like, what other contests have you won besides I that? I don't know. Not, like, nothing? Not, yeah, no, I, nothing that I can... I won Do the you, AIL, first AIL at Woodward West. The first one? I got one? an electric guitar. What was, year was that? Was like 2009, maybe. Oh, so, yeah, a while ago. And you got oh, look- no, 2006. Was it, it the was, one it in was that Escondido? Uh, Woodward West. Oh, Woodward West, okay. Yeah. Cause you're not like really a contest kind of guy, are you? I love going to them. I love skating in them. Um, I just don't care what the result is, you know. So you, you like, still go to compete, kind of? Not. To, I I go to skate and have fun, and like you're around with people. Like you're gonna like get hyped. Like a big jam session kind of thing. Yeah. Not yeah, like I want to win. I just want to do cool shit. Yeah. If I like go to a comp and I'm not skating, I'm probably on the side, just like yeah, uh, yeah, uh, wanting itching. to, yeah, just yeah. to join the fun. Mm-hmm. And like competitions at home never meant they were never really meant much to yeah. win so it was just like brought home it was down like the best and, session yeah. ever you yeah know? it's like everyone's decided that <laughs> today way to they're on you know yeah. it's like it's a good way to think about yeah. it yeah because i never looked at it that way i just always hated contests yeah I feel the pressure huh? yeah for no reason hmm. like i don't give a shit about winning it's just like the pressure of you doing yeah. it i don't know i never like i maybe just the contest that i always entered i just didn't feel it wasn't like too homey-ish i guess because yeah. it wasn't people who i normally skated with i guess that's why i felt differently yeah yeah i remember talking to stockwell about it one time 2013 wrs worlds or something like that and 
he was just rolling around outside the skate park and i was like i oh, you hyped to skate and he's just like mm. ah. i was like you like it's a demo dude do mm. exactly what you want you yeah. know yeah and like he obviously does you know mm. he skates completely uniquely mm -hmm. and amazingly you know and yeah that's kind of how i feel about it it's like if i if i have a trick i want to do and i don't get it then i'll be maybe annoyed or something mm. that i didn't get it yeah probably not to be honest but like um and if i do i'm happy you know but that's within what i can control you know mm -hmm. how some other person decides to judge it is completely out of my control you know yeah. and i don't like I'm happy with what I do. You so know, you winning was like a complete you know. like you was like oh cool like like a bonus. I was like oblivious like oh I, I just had like fun <laughs> I, I just yeah. had fun and you like, go in you know, there with like a good intention like the intention is just <laughs> yeah have fun don't yeah. get hurt yeah. that's it do not get hurt <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> rule number one yeah <laughs> it's, it's it's not yeah. I'm Gav Drum I'm gonna be the best today or better than no, everyone no <laughs> no it's just like yeah go out there and have but you 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 just like well that's when the best skating comes out anyway most of the time like when you're just like comfortable and like not under that pressure and you're having a good time and enjoying time with your friends yeah I remember man last year some of those tricks you were doing on the contest i was so stoked to watch like there was like that Jeez, that dude. true dark like dark, dark rocket macchio that was like fishy and it was yeah. so sick but yeah. then like i love like the the ttp like full cab to like dark ttp oh yeah, uh, yeah it was so too. sick and like someone like i saw it in, like a slow motion mm -hmm. yeah, thing. yeah it was I, just I so sick too. it was just like what i ran out of box on it <laughs> no it was sick <laughs> yeah, right. the first time i saw it was in slow motion and i because I, I guess i didn't see it when i was there but then like I saw you TTP and then you keep kept spinning in slow motion. I was like, what is he doing? And I'm just like, well, watch, like well, what's next? And then it's lucky. And I was like, no, <laughs> the but, suspense is killing me. But I had the same sentiment. I was like, oh, he needed more box. Like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you yeah. needed like yeah. a few more, but it was still awesome. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that's cool. That's a good mentality. Cause a lot of people don't get that. Like I said, like I never really was able to like capture that mentality in skating. Yeah. It was and different when I came here in why? 2006 Texas um, ASA um, I just remember I don't know different mentality I guess I knew no one but like mm. people were like competing <laughs> yeah, was like, yeah oh. no hold on was so like, like a, I, I guess maybe yeah. it was different back then too maybe it's not like that I haven't, I haven't entered a contest in forever but yeah. it used to be like bitter calls like everyone's in it to fucking win it you know like Oof, that was, that it was, was beast it was super competitive yeah. and you would just yeah. like go everyone just goes straight for hammers you know like off the bat because yeah. that's kind of what you got it you had to do back then yeah. it was it was different now. and it produced amazing stuff oh like, yeah definitely you know? it was it was uh, hell yeah it was like one of this truly Incredible. unique yeah, yeah to want to that time but maybe that's probably why i didn't like it and i actually remember like one of the first heats i had with i was like oh i know people in my heat this is fun and i actually yeah. did have a good time <laughs> no but the, like rare yeah. that the, the, there was pressure but but there was like a lot of what you're talking about too there was like a yeah. lot of like broing down and like yeah. If a homie was like trying to do something like mm -hmm. sick, like and you're in like the same heat or whatever, yeah, yeah. you're like, you're like course, dude, yeah. dude, get yeah, that, yeah. get, get it. it. Like, you know, you yeah. wanna it's not like I don't that's think the I team for the session yeah. thing. Yeah. It's like, oh I got these yeah. guys, like, let's go. Yeah. Everybody, let's let's exactly let's put on a show. Yeah. No, that, that and it and it was like that, like those kind of things and I don't Blading know. cups like that. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Well also the setting for blading cup is like really Yeah, that's not like it's just like it's just like more of a like there's it's like a street thing where people are walking by and they're like doing some shopping over here and then there's some blading and people are getting like beers yeah. and yeah. you know like not people who are skating more like laid the, back by the people in like the street like yeah exactly there's like a yeah it, it is so, more demo-ish the blading cup than right, a it, contest yeah, which right. is a good vibe to yeah. give off it's just a celebration yeah mm -hmm. it really you know? is yeah and a place where everyone can come and hang out and you know catch up with people or meet people you know yeah um people they've seen people they haven't seen you know yeah that's like the best yeah. part about contests yeah and in my whole opinion. weekend that's that's what i heard about this year i heard this year was like it was <laughs> great I mean, they've i've only been to two but they were both great you know i think dion came to the 2012 one the one the first one you went to yeah 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 well, that, a bunch of people were there so you've been to Andy three Cruz then. came yeah, to that yeah. one just two oh no three now yeah, yeah. you won the yeah 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 that andy cruz and dion that must have been fun yeah dude Damn. <laughs> yeah i wonder what do you have a funny andy cruz story Did dude it's so funny <laughs> you was, that that yes. whole thing i 
John mentioned Andy Cruz when I when I got into town, and the first thing he said was <laughs> that dude fucking puts his fucking balls on people. <laughs> like that's it, or something like that. Or like, why did he say yeah. that to you? I don't know. He just, it just was, came oh, up. Yeah, it was like Scott was in the car and they yeah. were just talking about oh, shit. Like, and Andy oh, came up and they, yeah. yeah, they were both with like, yeah, it is. Yeah. Part of me feels really <laughs> bad because, like, on this show, the, the times we've mentioned Andy, it's like about him peeing on for someone. Anybody, for, four. for everybody who doesn't know Andy right. Crew, who Andy Cruz is, because he hasn't been around like, in a while. Yeah. <laughs> but, you, but you know, it's like, and so part of me feels bad. Like, it's like, oh, man, we're talking about Andy, like, you know, doing all these things. But, also, He'd be laughing, dude. He did those things. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> it's like he's, gotta, he must be okay with it. Got to live know? up to it. Yeah, he must be all right with it. You know? so. <laughs> Tim Shout Ward. out Andy Cruz. <laughs> Tim Ward was a little like that. Was he? Do things like that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I remember standing up the top of a ramp one time, and he's just sit, standing next to me, and just just like, <laughs> and just like just like has a, has a ball out or something like that like, <laughs> that's yeah. like illegal yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> funny joke yeah yeah, yeah. 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 You, you got like a pretty good relationship with like all the ogs down i like a lot of the ogs down there huh yeah yeah they're all i don't know they're all really great people hmm. you know yeah like, who still skates yeah oh who still skates yeah which ones still um skate? so people for the most part people periodically skate so like in a year there'll be a time where they spend time skating regularly and then they'll be doing whatever they're doing with their life and then at the same time next year they'll you know skate a bit more there's like a or, season for them yeah it's like whenever <laughs> the urge comes or whatever but because um, in chapter two like it, they made it like don made it seem like like everyone's like back yeah. which i know probably yeah. isn't the case yeah but yeah. i guess it was collective over however many years or once there was <laughs> yeah yeah but, but a lot of people came out for that and held it down and it was so sick seeing all these faces back again. Absolutely. But yeah. there's probably more. And Dom that- loves it too because he grew up getting the Australian magazines like four in a row and like mm-hmm. watching the X Games and, you know, or ASA. Of course. That's stuff. right. Four in a row. I, I didn't even know wow. that was Australian. Row. I didn't know four in a row was Australian. Yeah. Yeah, I it was sick. Yeah. So what he Dom didn't like even know them until that point or he or knew what? he knew of them all you but know, didn't know them I'm saying personally didn't know them personally oh wow that's crazy yeah, yeah. so there's cool. Josh Pinker skates quite a lot mm-hmm. um, Scotty, Scotty skates, skates a lot too yeah um, this is in Sydney. well Blake was in there Blake doesn't yeah he skates every now and then oh, okay like he's up for it um, whenever, whenever he has free time yeah on. whenever he can fit it in yeah. but Matt Blake never never falls as well yeah he he's just, one of those yeah and then you see him just cruising around the skate park and you're like god like a fakie 180 never looks so good mm-hmm. like you know and then he sort of does a couple other things you know mm-hmm. he like, was so oh, good god, for so yeah. long yeah he was so yeah. good yeah. his style was so sick too. smell the yeah. glove part yeah oh, no more yeah. tears <sighs> your skating yeah. reminds me of his skating too i feel like you're like a modern it's day a heavy, Blake Dennis. heavy influence yeah blake's top three for me at an age where you're influential like or you 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 know take on influences. Mm-hmm. Um, he was him Abdul Kohlberg and Latimer. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that's yeah. a nice diverse. They're all group stylish. Of They're all. Blake. It was actually Park at the Moon, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Park at the Moon. Yeah, but yes. Oh yeah. And yeah. and they were all humble, which was important to me at that age. So was Latimer. I looked up to. Yeah. So yeah. you said Latimer, Blake, and who else? I'm sorry. Abdul and Abdul. Kohlberg. Have you ever met Abdul? No. Oh, we should have no. made it Dang. try to get it together yeah. while you're here. We should have brought him down. Yeah. I got to come back. <laughs> yeah. There you go. When it's warmer. Yeah. Yeah. We can actually do some skating. Yeah, yeah. Not sure. freeze bleeding. Yeah. We had a good session yesterday, though. Yeah. Hell yeah. That was that pretty was fun. Great. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And Blake had this, like, this way of skating park lines that, like, there was a reason. Every, every trick connected, and there was, like, a reason why this trick set up to this one and he landed in this way because it led up to that one and it was like that made me get interested in the ideas of idea of like a one minute run like how creative you could be mm. and how like logical you can be and it's the same with like lines on the street and stuff like that it's like you know you land maximize the spot yeah and- like yeah just make everything make sense for you know for what movement you're doing yeah mm-hmm. yeah blake was super sick that's a that's a really rad concept i like that like those things if yeah like especially in like street when you could figure that out too, just like figure out a way to make it all yeah. be when it's that's not the intention of those 
particular things and yeah. they're now becoming obstacles and you're making it like this line that's yeah yeah and you can also on street it's like you know you can get to a spot and it can be like what have i got like you know i'm just mm-hmm. gonna run through my list of yeah, things, yeah. things i can do mm-hmm. irrespective of the spot you know and then you i don't know otherwise you could have uh the perspective of like what like forget what i can do on skates like what would be what's the best thing to be done for the spot on this yeah and then then it's then the question is what is unique about this spot Mm -hmm. like how can i show it you know it's like if there's a little dick at the end of the rail rail maybe you mistrial through it and pop off or Mm -hmm. you know you you show i don't know it's the thing i find really interesting Mm -hmm. in and like fun in skating is is the challenge of revealing what it is i see that excites me about the spot that i found you Mm -hmm. know I, yeah. I like. You know, f- Don Bruce was talking about the same thing. Yeah, we've like, talked right, about it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Don Absolutely. Bruce was talking about that. He said sometimes the 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 like the spot is just a trick or one trick. And yeah, that's the spot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or that's the mm-hmm. the spot calls for that trick or yeah. Yeah. one and. Yeah. I, I like when you go to a spot and it's like that, but it's not particularly your style of skating. Yeah, but you kind of force yourself to yeah, do that, and you're, like, and you're well, like, oh shit, I didn't know I could do that, but oh, you only did that because you ended up in a situation where you're like, this has to be done here. Right. I'm yeah. here now. I'm going to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you do that and you're like, oh, I didn't even know I could do that. Whether it's a different trick or the way you do a trick or a wall rider you might not be able to do or something like that. Yeah. And it's a lot, like that surprising way of, you know, pushing your limits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm more, I'm more inclined to be like, what's like, if there's a spot that's asking for a trick and I can't do it, I'm like, oh, sweet. So now I can like go and, learn something new you know and then i'll come back to it mm-hmm. and when i'm ready <laughs> or you take that nice. to another spot yeah yeah or yeah you find something like a, a version of it at a mm-hmm. spot that you know works mm-hmm. straight well, up you, train for a spot like i gotta yeah, get ready to do yeah, this yeah. spot yeah, yeah it's like i'm gonna learn bloody mizus you know yeah <laughs> for this. yeah yeah i did that with with negatives i'm shocking at negatives mm-hmm. but i learned it for there was a clip I, a spot i saw and was like it was like a ledge with a little thing on the side, and I was like, "Oh, if you alley negative mark here and drop down." Oh yeah, put, I put the clip in the I put the clip in the trailer for yeah. this episode. Yeah, that was like, so you learn, oh, I knew you had to learn it. Yeah, for like it. Yeah, <laughs> at a uh, different spot, you learned it. Yeah, I just went to a square, like an angle iron ledge. Yeah, and was like, all right, today's the day. This is we're gonna learn. Day. Yeah, alley <laughs> negative mark here. Do you still have an hour? Or you lost it. Oh, hell no. <laughs> hell no. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's on it, reserve. Yeah, exactly. It's if ready. I see a spot yeah. for it then like i'll bring it back it's ready to, <laughs> it's ready to be reactivated at any time yeah i tried like negative macchio like for two minutes one time and i'm like this is not happening i'm <laughs> yeah. done with it i'm not even gonna bother frustrating myself mm. with that trick yeah it's tricky it is, it is tricky it's a tricky it trick it's a tricky trick <laughs> it is. it's one of those things where like negatives in general like either you have it or you don't have it there's no one who like i could do some negatives like yeah. either you're really I'll good at them or you, you, you can't do anything mm. yeah, yeah. In, in your and Audi, yeah, I'm solid. You're in your and Audi, and porn <laughs> as opposed to Mizzou and acid. You know? <laughs> yes, oh, yes. yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, me too. I'm a soul and and I don't porn. know. I don't Definitely, know, I think it's just soul and Mizzou. Soul and oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know why you're everything. bringing porn. I don't know why you're bringing porns and acids into this. It's just in, soul and Mizzou. I think right. Yeah, like I'm a soul guy. Franco's a Mizzou guy. Clearly, mm-hmm. you're a soul guy. Soul guy. What oh. are you? You're a soul guy. Soul and top porn. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't know why you relate it to i feel like that's not i feel like because they're both they're both inward you know acid is like turn your knees out and yeah Mizzou's turn your knees out and yeah born and soul is like turn them in i would I, w- I would think like acid and soul would be like similar just because your soul's in the back and then a mizu porn star your soul's in the front so it's like different in that way yeah they, they, I, don't I guess they're all unique <laughs> yeah yeah that is like yeah. an interesting topic though the soul and mizu well, well another one is is the term porn <laughs> no by the way <laughs> yeah like what the heck like porn that's star, you mean yeah yeah just the term like i saw something someone posted something the other day that like uh, it was something along the lines of i'm not gonna paraphrase but something along the lines of ladies are now calling porn stars superstars and i agree <laughs> with this yeah i guess like because there's more ladies now and they don't so want they can do whatever the hell they want yeah like I, weekend you know yeah yeah i guess so, I mean, so like they, they said something like so we're gonna sick. start calling porn stars superstars and he's like i fully agree with that you i just I call them a star i guess so you know i think the star is a pretty straight way to true do, star yeah true star yeah, yeah that's true yeah sounds good i remember yeah, see, i remember a, seeing like one of the this is back in the day like 
they were like on the news and like, hey, so show us what's going on right now. And like someone's getting the vert and it's like, oh, that's like a 540. That's a, a Liu Kang. That's a porn star. And they're like, what? <laughs> this is like <laughs> morning ABC, good yeah. morning America. And you're like talking about yeah. porn stars. Right. Does shit. anyone even know why? Like, I don't know why. Like, like, who, we, we tried figuring that who, out. Who, who invented that one? We, yeah. we tried talk. I think we talked about that with like John. We know Tom Fry oh, did yeah. the fish brain. That's Tom Fry. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he did the trick. Um, I think I talked to Tom about it. Did actually. you? Yeah. And he was like, I think he said he was at Woodward and he did it. And then John was like, they were calling him the fish brain at the time. Cause he had like a, ba- a bad memory, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, yeah, he did it. And then John was like, Oh, the fish brain. And he was, I think Tom was just like, Fuck, what? <laughs> Like it's a topside Marco, dude. Yeah. <laughs> is that why he had the fish? Uh, is, is that why he had like, he the, did the, the goldfish he did logo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just he also it, came up with. He was first guy to flat spin three, apparently. Flat spin three. Yeah. On what? Like or a do box? the flat spin? Yeah. Yeah, I guess on a or or over spine or. Wow, the first like flat that. spin. A spine. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just shot it, thinking about yeah. like <laughs> trying to learn flat spin threes on a spine. Yeah, and Mizu. He he coined Mizu in Japan in like ninety two. Did he? Yeah. Because it was like, that means water, and that's what he would ask Doesn't for. Doesn't mean everywhere. water? Yeah. Mizu. I didn't know that. Yeah. In what in which in language? Japanese. In Japanese? Hmm. Yeah. It was on the f- a tour in 93. It's, it's documented in Daily Bread Issue 2. <laughs> really? <laughs> you fucking, you studied your shit, man. Wow. I, I, was, I was like, when I got him, I was like, I'm going to read all of, of them. Of course. And I yeah, read the yeah. first 10 and was like, oh, that's I gotta read like I like how you can reference week. them. I like how you like, reference them too. Like that yeah. was Daily Bread, uh, issue number two, yeah. page fourteen. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's easy when you're talking about the first two. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. I don't even think I mean, I've seen the first five. I haven't even seen them. I never yeah. like actually read them or anything like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, nope. maybe it the first the, ten. I yeah, it got to the point where I was just looking up for the hot shit. The yeah. good photos. One thing though was like, at that time there were photos of or throughout the history of magazines there were photos of people just doing a grind on a mini ramp and it was like so much emphasis was put on the stance because it was like one snapshot of a moment and i feel like you sit there and you stare at a photo um well you can still do it on your you know phone but it just like cultivates the importance of stance and like um i don't like as opposed to video where it could be more about like a switch up or something like that. Mm-hmm. But there are some phenomenal stances that have been, that have happened over the years. I had an old example, example, great <laughs> example, Seth Minor sweat stance. Oh I man. I think Brian Jaggers took the photo or something. Uh, Seth came to Blading Cup this no, year. That, that, that was that, so oh sick. God, which, <laughs> which is also, see, no way. See, dang, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But also how hilarious is that? Like, <laughs> Seth Miner did a sweat stance and Brian like a, and Brian, Brian Jagger took a photo. <laughs> I think I it's, think that was it. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. like it's it's a, it's a, you can I've even, got it on my Insta. It's like TJ like, Weber did a Soyal in '96 in Oxygen's and John Ortiz shot the photo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. It's like wow. <laughs> I'm sure it's common. You know, yeah. Brian that's Brian's cool. like, see that sweat stance was cool. But do it more like me, yeah. <laughs> and then it'll and, be better. And, and Seth's go. like, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I got it. I got it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So oh sick. man, that's sick. So Seth, what? yeah, like that was so. You were telling me the cool roster dude. of people who. Damn, is he? Yeah, he's real sick. Like I don't know, just did he have skates? That would yeah, have been he was cool. skating. Was he? Yeah. Did hmm. he do a sweat yeah. stance? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't a Mizu? That would have been sick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dude, do a Mizzy, do a Mizzy. Yeah. Sweat stance is a ballsy trick for like an OG to come back to do. Yeah. yeah. If you got Even, it, you got it. Yeah, you know, it is one of those things. But mm. still, just to, like, oh, I've skated like five years. Let me try a sweat stance. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please, no thank you. <laughs> yeah. They don't call it a sweat stance for no reason. It should be called a death stance. Speaking about, speaking about what they <laughs> call it, but let's bring... So porn stars should be called stars, but <laughs> if anyone knows who named it that, no, dude, yeah. this, a porn this is like star? a mystery. Yeah. Maybe it was, uh, <laughs> remember how they yeah. said Nick Hartman was like a, a porn uh, freak m- last Maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Nick Hartman, like he said, porn magazines all on his, all over his house. And, and like, that's when like Blading was like trying like super hard to be provocative. Yeah. They were like, yeah, yeah, we gotta, we gotta make a name for ourselves. We gotta be provocative. Yeah. Porn star. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just making <laughs> up what could it be. Yeah, exactly. What <laughs> it is. But let's go with the star thing. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of people well, in the chat it, agree with that. It'll, that they, they were digging it'll star. It'll be what it is, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. True star, top star. They go, it can catch. Top side star, yeah. Top star. Yeah. Top star. Top there's star. a, <laughs> there's a, you guys had Ryan Jacqueline on. There's a, um, I took a fake 720 from him. Or are you? Uh, oh, yeah. You know, let me, let got me. Style points from him. Let me that. run that. Do you have it? Yeah. Yeah. I par- I think I read something. All right, so talk about it first it, before I play the clip. He, I think he called it the Houston double, maybe. Ryan called it that. Yeah. It's just like a... Ryan Arnold? Ryan Jack. Jack Long called it. Okay. Yeah. And then... Um, the Houston double? That's yeah. it. <laughs> and it's just like the fakey seven, rocket, but you kind of have to just get Whip to it, the... Whip it, right? You kind of have like to ha- get to the rocket at some point, and then you got to keep going, so you yeah. It's kind of like two in. tricks in one, because it's like a fakey three rocket, and then it's just like another fakey three. Yeah, that's revert three. <laughs> fast as shit, so here. Whoa. That's sick. Hey... That's exactly how Jack Lone Shout out regular happy 40th. It's, it's yeah, fucking, there you go. Yeah. Because I, I, I said His it too. Like, yeah. lives on. Boom. Damn, that's so sick, right? <laughs> Woo! Dang. That is really sick. And that's like when I saw Jack Lone doing that, I'm like, that's the illest shit ever. So sick. Oh, and shit. I, Dude. Like, because no one does that still. Like, yeah. you've done it then. But like, it was like you were trying to do that. Yeah. But like, that was just natural for somewhere. him. Yeah, it was, came, exactly. It came from somewhere. Yeah. And it came from him. And I always pick, like, there's a, a clip in VG5, I think, mm-hmm. where Randy Spicer does his 540. I got to find it and throw it in, in, like, the edit. But Randy Spicer does his 540, and it's, like, the clip's in there for, like, half a second. But I think it's the illest 540 ever. It's, like, a, some tweak bio thing. It was part of... Who th- is it? Randy Spicer. Okay. I think it was, like, the Dog and Pony Show section or something like that. And, like, the last, like... It's before my shit. The last, like, <laughs> five or six tricks are all 540s. And it's back-to-back back 540, 540. And then Spies are just throwing in. It's, like, a whip. Like, it's, like, a tornado 540. It's weird. I got to throw it in. And, but, like, Frankie's that 540... Who? Frankie's got one like that. It's the reverse grab to the... Yeah, yeah. Oh, the next yeah, grab. yeah, yeah. That's, like, it's cool when you could do something like that. And you'd be like, oh, that's, you know, whoever... Like, if someone saw you do that there, like, I would have been like, oh, that's like a Jack Lone 7, yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. same thing with Frankie, but, like, yeah, they're so unique to that that, that style person. of a trick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, you know? It's not yeah. even just their style. It's the style of the way you do a, a specific trick. Rockets and, are so sick because they're, like, it's just one of those things that, uh, like, transcend blading. Like, it's in snowboarding. It's in skateboarding. Mm-hmm. You know, rocket airs and stuff yeah. like yeah. that. And it's been, like... You know, versus like a mute that's like, you know, ours or something like that. And, you know, yeah. like a Luke Hang that's ours, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. R- R- Rockets are just something that like people like in other sports. It's like a half cab. No, they can, like they can just get it. Like people who don't play, they're yeah. like, oh, f- yeah, he stuck out his, stuck out his yeah, legs there, dude. One, yeah. I get that. Like, you know, but I don't know. Yeah. I've always loved ro- Rockets are sick. Like you, always, you were good at those for a while. I haven't seen you do it in a while, but you used to do them a lot. Yeah. You used to do Rocket 5s Yeah. Shit. Oh, that's kind of cross. Oh, well, yeah, like yeah, you, yeah, you have the rocket, yeah, I used to be the more rocket little, misty, more the rocket, rocket misty, rocket, rocket just, 540 things, yeah, like like an off axis five, yeah, 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 even like Aaron Quarters and not shit, you rocket were good misty, no, different to a rocket misty, <laughs> yeah, 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 but it was like off axis, like what you're saying, but yeah, yeah they were rockets are sick, you just get to kick out and you're in the air and you're like, I can't oh, do that, cool, for shit. Out. I can't do that. I can touch sure my toes. Can. I can touch that attitude. No, that <laughs> attitude you can't. <laughs> so I got to work on my rockets. Change that attitude. I got to work on my rockets and I got to work on my backflips. Oh, <laughs> vibes. The two things I got to work on. <laughs> I guess word around town is you were offered a skate from Rossi, right? Yeah. Russ's. Yeah. Right? The, Rosh's, Rosh's, also, they Rosh's. say it different. Uh, he just yeah. told me. They, they say it in, different. I'll show you. Rosh's. Oh, no. Ro- Roches? Roches. Yeah, I mean, I got like obviously Roches. the Italian version is probably the authentic Yeah, ro- version, Roches, but yeah. What is the Italian version? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it means roaches. Roach. Co- <laughs> cockroaches, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, their exactly. logo was a roach. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, but... Okay. okay. <laughs> so, I guess you, you got yeah, off for a skate. And you, yeah. you decided to not? Or? Just continue skating with who I have been skating with. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you, were, you were skating with... You were skating them skates before that? No. Or no, you, you, you weren't. You didn't have any skates. I was yet. skating my V13s. Oh, you know, and they hit you up and were just like, "Do you straight up just want to pro skate?" Like, yeah, you weren't even on the team or anything. No, it was just an offer, and like, you know, that's that was, it was happy to receive the offer. You right, know? yeah, it was that was cool, but I don't know. I I'm more, I've I've been working with John for like ten years. Now, yeah, so, totally. You know, Would like you, and and. So I have a bunch of friends that I work together making things mm. and sharing a vision on. So, mm. yeah, I just, 
you know rather stick like, with john yeah it's, it's like nothing personal yeah 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 absolutely yeah i don't know i don't i don't want anyone to be on this like yeah you know yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's it's, it's not like, like it's not yeah, like a fuck Rosie thing. Yeah, yeah, and like also like that's happened with various people at various times, and I, like we can have a better conversation about it. It's just like it's not just like I don't know. Like like it makes sense for Joe, and you know I'm good friends with Joe and stuff mm. like that. Like it's sweet, it's all good, you mm. know. But there's so, no like hard feelings. But you've been you not at all. I I mean yeah. I I was thankful, but you and know, you've been I doing declined. things with and you've been doing that's things all. with John for. Like, Joe hasn't really been doing things with John like you've been doing yeah, things with John. Yeah, they don't like, know each other. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so that's like your... Fine. Yeah, that's like your thing. So, yeah. yeah. And you weren't even... Well, cool. Well, it was like a coincidence that, like, that started going around, and then you were announced on them skates, like, a week later or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And you weren't... So you weren't even riding them skates when they gave you the offer? No. Was that that was that before them skates was even out, or is that... Um, I can't remember. It was, like, February. Yeah, then it was, was like out. yeah, they then, were like was announced. announced. They were announced, announced yeah. yeah. But I was like at university, getting about to start university. That's where you weren't ready to even like be a pro, I guess, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. And pro, like, you know, there was a time where pe- where people were like, "ASA pro doesn't even mean pro anymore." Yeah. It's like, well, pro doesn't like. I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a very it's like a gray line. Yeah. of what is yeah. pro and what isn't but, pro, right? But surely. I think in 2018 we can we are healthy enough of a culture to also establish some pros have, yeah. and also have an independent company amongst the mix mm-hmm. you know totally. I think we can do that <clears throat> yep. you know yeah so I would like to help that happen you know totally and whatever part I can play in that is like the reason why I skated on Valo decided to skate for, with Valo 10 years ago yeah, yeah. You know, it's the same reason because I liked what was happening you know, and yeah, I don't know. It's like loyalty to the culture, totally. not, not to icons in the culture. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, I would say the same of John. Like he's pretty loyal to the culture. Mm-hmm. Of course. You know, so yeah, like minds, you know, mm-hmm. want to work together. So. No, so, that, that that makes that makes perfect sense. Of and course, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's not meant to like, yeah, of course, disparage or take anything away from any mm-hmm. other company because it's like everything's is appreciated but yeah like when you share a vision with someone like especially mm-hmm. like you know you got a certain amount of respect for for john and what he's done and like you know how much work he's put into like from blading cup imyt his company's on down to what he does today and mm-hmm. then to just you know to make the decision to want to continue working with him is yeah so i'm sure it's something that everyone <laughs> can like understand business as usual right yeah, exactly you know? business as usual that's no, it yeah it felt like it was kind of like a, a shock when it came out and then like mm-hmm. when the them them skates and it was announced oh, yeah. it was like it just makes perfect sense by that point like it, yeah. like duh like no no shit you know yeah and because you were writing Valos for however many years before that too so it's like it just that's like a natural progression in its own yeah it's like Valo riders most of them went to them skates you know yeah and and, and like you know if uh, there's like a, a lot of a lot of times people drop out of skating when you know they lose a contract or they you know, just like time's up mm-hmm. for some reason. And maybe, you know, it's not always on change good that. terms, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, and when that happens, those people leave. You know, they leave for a good five five or so years before they feel comfortable coming back and talking to role waiters. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like, it's, it's a whole thing. Like, very alienating experience yeah. for some people. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the culture has to restart each time and it's very hard to like... You Build know, anything with that. Yeah, yeah, and like things like this are allowing a culture to be you know archived Mm -hmm. so people can learn you know i've got plenty to learn about that type of stuff but it would be nice if people um if there were deals you know that allow people to have some sort of pro decent paycheck whatever Mm -hmm. um you know and have a good trajectory and you know still feel like they want to be involved in the culture after you know instead of getting chewed up and spat out yeah so, totally. Yeah. So that's then, what we worked towards. That would be yeah. something cool to see down the line for sure. And that's why I think the uh, the idea of the uh, like the high royalty skate that like I yeah. think is being introduced. Yeah. Ten to the skate, like, fifteen direct. That's a good deal. Yeah. 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 Because if yeah. you and these are like the ideas that have been being spoken about for a long time. But if you like support these companies that are going to do things like make those kind of investments into individuals who are sacrificing their time and their body to like 
kind of build the culture, then yeah, it's like it would be good to see them have the, the financial mobility to be able to do things like what whether it is like afford them to like live the lifestyle and continue to like grow on that or like even more so hopefully down the line like to be able to do something creative with their vision and have yeah have the means and the mobility to do so yeah most companies yeah. they've been around especially for you know 15 20 years it this the same shit like for that amount of time like nothing's changed but like anything else in the world there's progression to it yeah and you know you got to adapt to the times and got to do right by the people that make the industry what it is in the first place mm-hmm. and yeah you know john right away boom he starts his own company and then instantly first you know starts making these innovations yeah and yeah. there's companies out there that's still doing the same thing you know over and over again yeah and it's been working but there hasn't been a movement yeah. like what's going on now to, to change something and it's perfect makes perfect sense that you would want to you know back that up because you're that person too that needs that change being made for yeah you totally know? yeah I think it's cool that uh, a lot of the old team is still with John. Yeah. And, um, and new yeah. faces. And new know. faces. Yeah, new faces. That's too. important. But, you yeah. Know. yeah. Uh, that, that's really part of the progression. Sean, Sean yeah. Doss has got to skate. You know, yep. Yeah. Really rad. That's part of the progression. Oh, that's too. awesome. Yeah. Hopefully one yeah. day you'll get one somewhere wow. down the line. That'd, yeah. <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah. really cool. And, and, and hopefully every company that's involved in, in skating who's got a vision trying to do things, hopefully everyone does well. Yeah. Uh, should we open it up for questions? Yeah, or? we're gonna open up for questions. Let me shout. Out. We got we got a lot of people in here. Do we? Oh, well, we, we got Shooter in the house. Oh, Jimmy Shooter. Jimmy Shooter. Oh, the Jim Shoot. <laughs> Farmers in here. Miguel. We have. Uh, oh, Farm Dog. We have Lord Brian in the house. Mm. Let's see who else we got. Uh, say, I think Ryan Ryan Arnold um, has been like praising Jimmy Shooter a bit in his skating. You yeah. Know? Making calls for like the sit down, the machios and type shit. Of shit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. that's true. I didn't that's think about cool. that. Yeah, yo, shoot up. Oh, cool. Like, you, Let's you, see you, some you would know. Is it like, di- <laughs> is it like indirect or direct? Like, because I mean, you, you have Tons a relationship. Tell direct. Ryan keeps his shit. Ryan's <laughs> very reserved, yeah. huh? Mm. And he's unpredictable. Smart man. <laughs> he'll step on Machio on a ledge and then he'll like do some incredible shit in the same line. Like, yeah, yeah. He's Great. just that. That's Oof, that's the best way to be. If you're predictable, that's boring. I like people that are just. Don't know what's next. Yeah. Shout out Ryan Arnold, man. Yeah, shout out yeah. who we got. What up, R.A.? Big R.A. One eye. Dude. <laughs> Dude Chuck Chu trained in the house. We got Sir Dan Forteski. Skate Harder 2000. We got a lot of people up in here. Skate, Sir skate, Dan. Skate Hard 2000? Not a word, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> um, is that... Is that Skate Hard 2000. <laughs> I know who that is. So Skate Hard 2000 asks, how did the disastrous injury resulting in knee reconstruction shift Gav's approach towards <laughs> skating? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about this. I knew you had a seizure, but I didn't know you had reconstruction. Eighth of the eighth. You weren't ready for that. You weren't ready for that question, huh? Eighth of the eighth. <laughs> eight, eight, eight. No. Really? Yeah. Got skates for my eighth birthday. Eight wheels. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's a good or a bad number. Huh. But yeah, I like... I just completely destroyed my knee on the last day of a three-week tour around Australia, trying to 540 over the tour van off the second, <laughs> second level of the car park. And I, I went up and tried it once and did that whole land and then just bounce. And was like, oh, I've got it. And yeah, yeah. Flew at it and like just landed on it. Just all the, all, exactly the wrong movement. Just twisted and bent and snapped my AC. My kneecap was... On the other side of my leg. I don't want to be part of this conversation. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's extensive. Yeah. All, the, all the things: ACL, MCL, fractured both bones, tore the cartilage around both bones, tore the meniscus, tore the tendon that goes over the patella. Dude, everything. Dislocated the patella, <laughs> dislocated the knee joint, and took me three months rehab to get it good enough to have a reconstruction. <sighs> yeah, and then another twelve months. But my mom, my mom's a physiotherapist, so I was I was under good advice, you know. Um, shout out, mom! <laughs> shout out, mom! <laughs> shout out, mom! <laughs> it's good to hear that when people have injuries like that, though, yeah. they're able to like you're still shredding hard as fuck. And yeah, usually when you do something like that, like I'm sure in the moment you're like, I'm never gonna skate again. In my mind, I was like, I want to be able to walk around, you just know, like with stand. like do kids stuff. one day or something. Like, yeah, you know, I need to look after my knee. I need to yeah. do the right things, and I. Yeah, spent a, I did a lot of effort, you know, and it was 10 years ago, and I can still, I don't know, I jumped off a roof into a bank on my 30th birthday with Dom <laughs> in Chapter 2. That's sick, though. But it's like, yeah, I found the right thing 
you know, the bank would alleviate the... Yeah, of course. You know, the pressure. And How old are you now? 32. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, it, it definitely pushed my skating to evolve quicker. I was always interested... I always prior, prioritized innovation as the most important. It's what I valued the most. Um, but I like a mix of everything. You know, like mm-hmm. a classic trick, innovative shit... Right, you know, healthy yeah. balance. Yeah, but then I, but then I actively was like, okay, like what? How do I pave out a future to continue a way of skating to continue allowing me to skate? So mm-hmm. you know, gapping off a second story of a building yeah. is not is not the direction unless I want it to be the last trick I ever do. <laughs> right. You know, so I would save it. It's like I I did. A true spin wall ride rewind three in create originals part mm-hmm. and that was like the first gap i did in so long but it's because i had an idea i had something to add so i was like all right i'll do it for this you felt mm-hmm. good after that though yeah t- yeah That's like that the knee yeah. wasn't yeah it was fine <coughs> yeah I, and i did it like 30 times or something you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah you're good <laughs> it was sweet yeah but like but you yeah i just took treat it with took, respect yeah, yeah yeah i took a little yeah. extra time on it mm-hmm. you know i find when you have like an injury it 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 like um, kind of alters your skating in a way because you're forced to do things differently, like not yeah. how you were before. Totally. Did you have anything like that when you? Yeah, I mean, from your knee? well, at the time, I was filming a part at the time, and I remember I was like, I made a remix of it, and it came out as an Inri edit, and I had the Ender trick in it, and um, I remember at the time being like, that's the basis of the whole section. <laughs> that's gonna, that's the bar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then. I don't know. I had to change my perspective pretty quick on right. like what I what I thought was achievable. Yeah, you know. And then, yeah, I just kind of. I think it was really fifteen months after the Rico. I had skates on and I dropped in a quarter pipe and I just felt so fucking good <laughs> that I like. I was like, don't ever forget. What that, that feels like. Yeah, mm-hmm. that the mm-hmm. best thing you can get from skating is accessible to everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, just walk out the door, put them on, you know. And you can you can have fun pushing where you go on that scale, mm-hmm. but that's, like, enjoy the process of that, you know. Right. So, yeah. Good advice. I, I get yeah. that. I honestly get... I, I got that same bit of advice from, like, or similar from a Miguel like he was just like yeah Miguel's just, on it dude because he had the same <laughs> he had like back problems where he couldn't skate forever long, and like he was just like when he was able to skate he would go up and just like stall backside or stall fish brain on like a, a three or four foot quarter and he's like jeez I never want to not be able to do that <laughs> yeah you know and it's just like something you take for granted pretty mm-hmm. often because of you're like you know you set this like high bar for yourself and you like you take those like little basic things that like you just do that it was like so so fun and then like once you have the brakes and then you do that, like you go up to a quarter and you stand up nice and tall mm-hmm. on a fish brain stall, you're yeah. like, man, that like, and you, and you pop yeah. and you pop you back in. Yeah. And you're just like, man, like don't lose that. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? Hold on to that. So, so I, I think and Miguel's turned it into an art, dude. Oh, like the man. way he, the way he, he like shreds into coping and set slides out and stuff. It's mm. kind of like a guitar solo when someone's bending notes or something. Yeah. Right. It's like, the, here's the line and he's just yeah. playing You're around right. it. Yeah. Like, it's this, it's, good it's metaphor. incredible. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like when people like really transcend sick. the trick and really make something their own. Yeah. Like, because yeah. here's the trick, like there's the tech, textbook definition of it and now like your job is to like, to, to make it interesting or make it yours or yeah. contribute to it and I think, yeah, like, yeah, you do a good job of that. Miguel does a great oh, job of yes. uh, just, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's yeah. cool to do that. Those make, yeah. Make cool. it fun. Personalize Keep your it stuff. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it fun. Um, not a word. We kind of, you kind of touched on this before. Not a word. Ask, uh, how did growing up in Melbourne inform or influence your skating? Uh, it was the biggest influence, you know, was you start from a dot and you move outwards. Yeah. So, what about yeah. like maybe like the people or something like that? There's, um, I would say, skating straight in the city was like was shaped what I, I don't know what I, what I, what I enjoyed in it, like what I wanted out of a day of skating with my friends. Um, people wise, they're like 
it was Josh Clark and this older generation of dudes that really yeah. like sort of like that rich through. history probably helped so much too mm-hmm. so know? much so yeah. much but it was skate meets with Tim Ward was absolutely crucial huge influence um, you used to skate street around Melbourne with him yeah and him doing skate meets with everyone just literally getting everyone in town to come skate the street together yeah that's a big that thing that was the biggest thing that was incredible <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah um, and yeah like jumping in the car with Josh Clark and Chris Corvino and Hayden Watt and all, a bunch of guys um, and getting shown the road or like getting getting pushed to um actually just seeing them skating at a certain level you know and being there just got me thinking got the Mm. wheels turning Mm. just being able to witness it right yeah Yeah. those are good idols to have how quick someone ends up doing a trick or how they go about it you know Mm -hmm. like like oh like that just that just happened yeah (laughs) well especially in that and i saw it and i i understand that when you see something Mm-hmm. in your face it it like you learn quick you learn yeah. quicker and that was yeah watching even just like the, the scale of things they would skate was mm-hmm. like i was like whoa like mm-hmm. okay like yeah we huge impact this. we got this yeah, yeah. yeah totally and then hayden watt was was oh man i forgot about hayden watt wow Hayden Watt's my boy <laughs> he was in the states for a while yeah, yeah. he was yeah i, I didn't even know he was Majet. australian Huh? His homies with Majet. Mm-hmm. Um and yeah, he he's to this day done the biggest handrail in Australia. Like and it's at <laughs> the biggest sporting stadium in Australia too. Like, like like longest? Uh highest longest. Highest, highest longest. is drop rail? And it's high as oh. well. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and it's like huge. Like the Jeez. drop is nuts. Yeah, and it's so mellow. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it was like um is there a clip of that anywhere? Oh, I'd have to find it. No, oh, okay. It's a, it's a mission. Yeah, actually, yeah. Oh, no. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's... uh, Yeah, he... And he was just absolutely crushing it in Australia. Like, won eight, eight street comps in a row. Jeez. Off, off, like... Or eight competitions in a row. Um, and, like, came out with this incredible couple skate parts. And, mm-hmm. like... Yeah. He was like, I remember, I remember skating street with him just before, like in the months before him doing that rail that he kept secret. Mm. Um, and we just go to this flat rail and he just back shifty it or back royale it. Just, just 10, you know, as fast as he can. Mm-hmm. With as many, like perfect every time. First time and every time. And I was like, what the hell? What is, what is he trying to do here? And then, yeah. A month later, this clip comes out. And I was like, wow. mm-hmm. It's crazy when you see, <laughs> you see people doing shit. Like, especially yeah. when you start skating and, like, you still have a lot to learn. Yeah. And you see, like, shit in videos and pictures and magazines. Like, okay, yeah, it's cool. And, like, you get to see it in person the first time. Like, I remember, like, some of those moments also. And mm. especially when you have such, like, such like some of the best skaters in the world doing yeah. that with you, too. Yeah. And that's probably such a big impact on your, just, like, your whole yeah. vision of the whole sport. It's like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. this is real right now. Yeah. I got to, like, learn how to do this stuff. Like, this is yeah. serious. And there's, and for me, at maybe like 16 or something, I'd say the biggest influences for Australian skating was like Blake Dennis, Ian Brown, Justin Buchanan, this guy Janos Vovos from Tasmania, and another guy from Tasmania, Alex Davies. And they were just like best style. Yo, shout out Janos Vovos. That guy's the man. Yo, shout out Tasmania. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Shout out to the Tasmanian devil. (laughs) (laughs) That's Shane Yoss. Oh, he's from Tasmania. That's right. That's right. They used to call him the Tasmanian devil. Because he used to do like all those... like. That's a good person. First 1260. First First 1080. Gravity games. Did he do... No. First 12 and first 1440. And Sessa was first 9 and 10. But didn't he do first double too or something like that? Ooh, I don't know. Who's that? Uh, I don't know. I think I'm not it, sure. I think it was. I don't even know. I that. thought I it was even. Shane. Stinsman did on something. Long, long did he? Swap. People long were throwing doubles on for no, back no, in the day. Doubles? Like it was. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. We we. What was I doing? I was watching like old vert section with somebody recently. A few more and, than like well, yeah, five you, people had doubles. Mm, maybe around five. Yeah, I can see about five. Yeah, and like I felt like. I'm like, yo, everyone's doing... Du- who was I watching it with? I don't remember who I was watching with. We were like, everyone was doing double backflips. I'm like, yo, what, how do we overlook yeah. this back in the day? Like, how crazy it is to double backflip a vert ramp? Especially when you're 10 feet in the air. Like, they're not low double backflips. No. Fabiola yeah. was doing double backflips. Uh, guarantee. Really? Yep. We saw a clip of her doing double backflip. Hmm. 
I mean, must I, be I in in later years. So yeah, right. maybe. I, I wasn't Rega- I, regardless. Yeah, even I need to, I need to today, look double into, backs. I was never too... Fabiola, what a fucking what a skater. Arlo, yeah. Fabiola. Fabiola. Oh, Fabiola. <sighs> yeah, as in just just like as far as she still girl, ca- girls being like fuck it, I can. What a I career! Can, I, can, I can do this. She shit. still skates. Like, still the flat spins. Yeah. And stuff Here, here's something too. you can say about many skaters in the past. What a career. Yeah, what a career. <laughs> <laughs> you can use that word. What a career she's yeah. had. Like, you know, you could and actually still, do, you know, yeah, yeah. Still, and still skating, yeah. you know, it's crazy. It's yeah. nuts. You could actually have to, like do an ESPN 30 for 30 on her. Like, she probably had sure. something like that in Brazil. You yeah. could. She's always yeah. on TV. Yeah. We follow like, her Instagram. She's oh, yeah. always on like any interviewed on TV. It's all Brazilian stuff. No, yeah. she's like a true star, especially down there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True definitely. star. Yeah. A tr- true, true star. star. Oh, <laughs> it's been done. <laughs> uh, Raj Mander asks, do you have any superstitions with skating or sort of rituals you do before a trick or kinda. before a session? <laughs> yeah, kind of. What do you got? It's like borderline OCD or like, I, or it would be the useful side of repetition. <laughs> you know, it's like no matter what I, whatever it is I do the first time I go up, to like the run up in a spot whatever that is if it's by a door and i sort of like lean on the door handle or something Mm -hmm. that's what i'll do every every time time. yeah it's like you're trying to like it's like you've got a machine with 12 knobs and you're trying to (laughs) calibrate something in so you leave 11 alone and you adjust one you know you always do that yeah so i'll 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 repeat everything because it helps me focus the minute thing i'm going to change to make the attempt work Jeez. Hmm. so and it'll it'll turn into a thing so like that's I'll interesting go. i've never i've never heard it like i've yeah. never heard it described like that yeah so yeah it's whatever it is i'll just i'll repeat it so yeah and and there was like i don't know there'll be like freaking hand signals or all kinds of shit mm-hmm. you know yeah but that's the basis of it is that <coughs> that it's, it's like mental rehearsal they teach mm-hmm. people athletes in sports institutes about mental rehearsal wow you know i feel like that'd be visualize it if you can't see it first why on earth are you gonna throw yourself down (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, you've got to know that it's that that makes perfect sense it out that makes perfect sense Hmm. yeah and if you can't do that first then don't try it like or reduce it until you can figure it out and then come you know safe safe steps yeah Yeah. Yeah. tian newen (laughs) tian shout out Uh, yeah yeah um (laughs) <laughs> Cheers to Tian. Cheers to Tian. Dukes. All Dukes. day yeah. Dukes. <laughs> Tien, My man. Tian told me that that he's just like, there's a safe way to do everything. You just gotta find the safe way. Mm-hmm. That's it. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And he's done some incredible shit. Yeah. I've seen him transferring King Grails and stuff like that. You know. It's fucking insane the shit that he does. Yeah. Mr. Self Destruct, Gav, who's the best skater in Australian history? <laughs> and what trick do you hmm. not have question. that you want to learn? Mizu. Mizu. Sweat, sweat stance. A sweat stance? A good one. You don't I have mean, sweat I can, stance? I can do it, but I'm not trying to show anyone. <laughs> you don't have sweat stance? I can, but like, I just, you know, people have the sweat stance. Yeah. You know, and I got other things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's definitely true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, best skater in Australia history? Uh, best, well, I don't know. I don't, I'm not, I don't think like that anyway. yeah yeah but what about your videos. favorite my favorite i'll probably put it down to blake you know oh i don't know god damn it there's too many you know all right all right yeah <laughs> yeah he's 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 up there mm. you know dion had some phenomenal set slides oh man dion there's too many yeah. good skaters out manual of manual Blairs. Yeah, out of T. It's too many. See, yeah. see, see what, what you're doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, that's it. Yeah. yeah. It's a tough question. Yeah. So that's a tough Absolutely. one to answer. So I guess we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at a I'd lot. I'd say Blake because Blake, he yeah. was like, he was the guy when I was like 13 and I was like, he's doing it. Maybe <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> you know? He's doing it real good. Yeah, totally. he did that for everyone. He was like, he was the guy that had the skating in center videos and stuff. Yeah. You know? And like... The stamp fest section not, was so good. Not many Aussies got a lot of footage in... American, American videos, videos. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. To ha- yeah, to have a section of Stan Fest, yeah, like, Kill Team, crazy. like you know, yeah, Kill Team, yeah, yeah. it's a big he, step. He was like the era of like I wouldn't say the last, but he was like era of like proper pros, yeah. Like he was yeah. on 
tour in the United States, like on NIST, like the NIST, like yeah. all the stops, like they were paying him. He skated all the ASAs to go and stuff on, like, like that. The, and I think he like top. He won a lot of those, and I think he top three a lot of those. Mm-hmm. And then he was also like he was like a a real pro. Like, yeah. Oh, know, actually, street I, pro. Like, I, yeah. yeah, yeah. I do have the person. It's Alex Davies, who's my favorite skater of all time ever. Alex he's Davies. Like, he's the dude. Dude from Tasmania. Most stylish dude I'd ever seen. He skated in my local skate park. He like was just an incredible person. He was like five years older and he was like the guy being like, pick up your rubbish or like, you know, don't, you don't have to, just cause you're 14, you don't have to act like a, you know, everyone else, like mm-hmm. use your brain, do what you want. Like coming from the most stylish guy. So I'd he was a good seen. influence. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, I remember being, going home and being like, wow, like this is a good culture. Mm-hmm. I met this guy, you know, down at the skate park and he was like a stand up fucking guy. Hmm. You know, that's good to have. That's yeah. really cool. There was an era where there was a lot of assholes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, not yeah. assholes, but people acting like it and yeah. it didn't give a good image yeah. you know, for a little bit. Totally. Yeah. That's good. All right. So you do have an answer. Yeah. That's cool. Alex, Alex Davies. Davies. Angela Bender asks, I didn't notice this, so I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, why did they choose Solomon to skate in Blading Burma in some of the scenes? Was there a reason he didn't skate Them's? Well, that was obviously before Them's skates were out, first of all. Who who skate? Me? Anyone in Blading Burma. That was before them skates was, was out. Were you skating Solomon's in Blading Burma? No. Was, that was from last year, no? I was skating year, no? the Red Majestics. Joe was skating Solomon's. Yeah. Must have hmm. been. Oh, and Matthew. Maybe like, were the kids skating Matthew. Solomon's? Was it... No. Were they, they donated? Just, they Maybe were skating them for... No. Matthew and... Joe was skating Solomon's for like years. Oh yeah, so mm. yeah. That's just what they. That's skated. just what they skate. Yeah, it just yeah. came. You know, it was filmed a lot before a while. Yeah, before it came out. Yeah, it was on last year. Yeah. Yeah. So that was before Joe was on Rosie's. You were. Yeah, on it was like them. Yeah, I, were you no, skating I, I was on. I was on Valo. B thirteens. You were right. Yeah, I was yeah. right. I was okay. skating the maroon ones, which is sick because everything in Burma is that color. Or Myanmar, like it's oh, a yeah, real, that reddish, it's a real like, prominent color yeah, in the like area. A, it's like a stony kind of yeah. color, and they like chew this betel nut shit that like oh. is all red and there's like yeah, this they red spit, spit it out, right, or something like yeah. that. Did you have that? Don't no, know hell no, <laughs> no. <laughs> a, a betel nut, betel nut. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that in like top it's just It's like maybe like nicotine or something like that, mm, okay. but like also you could you could Get sick. put anything on it. Okay, yeah. Hmm. And yeah, and you see this people, like it ruins people's teeth. Oh, you know, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, was not trying to <laughs> trying yeah. to have the beetle nut. <laughs> it also sounds funny, beetle nut. Mm-hmm. You beetle know what nut. I mean? It's like it could be so many different beetle things. Nut. It's like a nut out of a tree, yeah. or is it an actual beetle? Yeah, or yeah, is yeah. It like, like what is this? <laughs> <laughs> um, Ricky Murphy asks. I guess this is in reference, to kind of to how. We talked about this. He wants to know the the most memorable trick that you ever witnessed. Witnessed? Can you does anything Oof. particular come to mind? So, something came like the craziest thing. I remember seeing something and being like, "That's the craziest thing I've ever seen." And it wasn't even landed, but it was almost because of the well, spot. What was it? True spin soul on like a nipple height down ledge over a double set Who? from Phil Campbell, a skater in Melbourne at a street comp, mm-hmm. and with a massive drop on the other side and like just it was the crazy like people skate that ledge in VG20 um there's like a a part um but yeah I just like it was just in so huge did you land it? he the path went on an angle and he came off <coughs> perfectly forwards and just landed uh, in the, on the dirt and just, uh, and just <laughs> you know uh, but like yeah I hate when that happens that's so <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was the craziest. I don't know what I've... Yeah. That's that's always been the one that I was just like... Oh, I saw it like in 2001. I remember a guy, 540 Disaster Kindgrad, a box rail in at my local skate park mm-hmm. um, at the Australian Titles Competition. And, and that was like... You. That was 2001. Yeah. And it, yeah, actually, I remember running around the skate park after with Robbie Pitts and he, and he was saying like, Imagine if someone could do that on a handrail, just straight yeah. up on a handrail. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. so funny thinking yeah. about that now. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's so fucking funny thinking that's about so that. So funny. Yeah. Um, JKS Yo Gav, what is an Aussie drop air? Aussie drop air? Yeah. Oh, drop bear. It says drop air. Oh, uh, Aussie drop air. 
Who who was it? JK. I don't know. That doesn't mean anything. I Aussie, don't know if that Aussie, was like one of your boys. Aussie or drop. Yeah. Aussie drop. Don't know. Don't know. Mm. Don't know. Okay. We need more info on this. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a lead in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, drop air. I know about the drop bears. What's the drop? You know about maybe the that. Drop bears? I don't, maybe that's what they meant. I don't know. No, it's something else. <laughs> what? <laughs> don't drop beers. <laughs> the drop. Drop bears. Drop. They. Is it beers they, or bears? Bears. Bears. Beers. Okay, sorry. Bears. <laughs> beers. Beers. What? Beers. <laughs> bears. Beer. They 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 live in the trees and okay. they'll, they'll drop bears. on you. They'll down drop there. down on down you. There. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. It's just a joke people have. <laughs> yeah, he's totally he's he's talking about someone else. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Duncan asked, "What companies no do you words. wish you were sponsored by back in the day? Any random Aussie brands we might not have heard of? Crank straps." <laughs> <laughs> that was Australian. Yeah, there's all this shit that like I, I didn't even like obviously knew of them, but I didn't know that they were Australian. I didn't know. I didn't know, yeah. Four yeah. I didn't know Four in a Row was either. Oh yeah, Cosmo, dude. Well, Cosmo, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was like Cosmo. the biggest one. Yeah, Cosmo, yeah, by far. Sure. Yeah. Even to this day, people fucking want Cosmo shit. Mm-hmm. Damn right. And Sky's got that mad big collection, right? Uh, he's got some. Some? <laughs> just some? <laughs> I don't want to blow up his. his oh his damn! Collection. Yeah, right. He's gonna start getting DMs. Well, well he, had, he had a. He had a. I don't know how many. It's in, it's in chapter two. You see uh, his true, box. Dom already blew it. Yeah, he blew it. <laughs> <laughs> he's screwed. So he has. Yeah, he has the mean collection. Yeah, the amazing wheels. Yeah, I guess Cosmo. That's why the one. Cosmo. Yeah, and I just never really thought like that. Like I never was like, oh, sponsor. I don't know. <laughs> Like not no, there was not like, in that. Th- there was like no know. like when you were younger, like no dream sponsor you wanted to have. Like I remember, I, I had my favorite. I, was younger, I wish I skated like for Senate. Shit, okay, know, yeah, you know, yeah. I remember back in the day, I was like, yo. No, I didn't lie, but I wish I was on Senate, man. Back in the day, <laughs> oh I wish hell I, yeah, that would have been so sick. Yeah, that's uh, fair. Alex Delaney, favorite part about Bleeding Cup? Just in general, in general, I don't know. Just like having. A place to celebrate the culture. That's the basis of it, you know. Mm. It takes any form, and it happens in various various places. I hear when it clashes like that, you know, is a place yeah. where people come together because they like rollerblading. You exactly. Know? Mm. Yeah, from all and over the world too, not just yeah. like a local thing. It's just like the, it's just smiles all day from everyone, you know, because what? of rollerblading, and it's just it's, yeah, it's beautiful. It's like you get to share something you love and do with your friends with a larger collective you know Mm -hmm. yeah it's great if anyone you know has cold feet and they and they want to go you know but aren't sure about it just go and and hang out and talk to people Mm -hmm. it's great like like remember it's really great it's like a reminder of why you're doing it in the first place yeah exactly it's Mm -hmm. like all right yeah yeah Yeah. and you leave like let's do this (laughs) yeah Yeah, i remember (laughs) i remember last year uh, leaving and talking to Mike Lilly and he was like, I, like, get some footage between now and next time. Like, I want to see some stuff. And I was like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> yeah. Mike Lilly said so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's a good idea. Yeah. Um, we're going to wrap this up soon. But um, I guess Duncan was uh, mentioning on that question we were talking about before about the company, the Australian companies. Um, I guess he said more companies that you had that your visions aligned with back oh. in the day well like, i guess I've, like how them skates yeah how you, okay. how you mentioned that maybe something along those lines well i guess i was form, there anything like that i formed those ideas when i started thinking about my it being a possibility to skate for companies so before that i didn't think too much but i mean good companies back i i was a kid i didn't really yeah i really not, consider right? the yeah, you just wanted to skate, yeah, was, want to skate like right? What, what was cool, mm-hmm. you know, my game. Yeah, no, that's yeah, yeah. Oh, I was not not a word. Also, asked um, growing up at Robbie Pitts, how would you describe the way you both push each other in skating, life, and art? What was well, what was that? <laughs> growing up, <laughs> growing up at Robbie, Robbie Pitts, <laughs> how would you describe the way both of you pushed each other in skating, life, and art? Um, how would I describe it? It's extensive. You know, Rob and I have been skating for so long. We'd like, there's a back and forth of ideas and, you know, you've known someone for so many years. You can just like, you you sort of like grow through this thing at the same time, you know, together. So, yeah, and we both share an interest in art and design and 
music and all kinds of stuff. So so growing up together it was more than just skating. Yeah. Together. Yeah. Yeah. For like sure. you were actual homies. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I like I, a big part of coming here was just hanging out with Rob. Yeah. You know that's sick. Yeah. Yeah. Get so, to see him. So yeah, and opinions on on just like yeah, you watch a video like that's a guy I'm going to talk to about it before anyone really or I'd probably be in his room uh watching it because his parents bought it you know Mm -hmm. yeah so and then yeah growing up getting to the age where you go out to bars and clubs and stuff like that and like we both got robbie was going to the clubs yeah and we yeah yeah and then we (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah. well not he wasn't like party party boy but like you know rob yeah um and he also got picked up by the older jan like i did you know um kind of got put under the wing like uh in the same way as mm-hmm. i did yeah and yeah we're like occupy that that link space somewhat between mm-hmm. the generations right cool yeah. very cool yeah all right we're gonna wrap it up but there's a lot of questions still so let's do like a a, a flash round a of hit. questions yeah let's see what we got here um gabriella tito asks where would you where else in the world would you like to blade or visit Anywhere I haven't been. Uh, um, Korea. Korea. I'd like to go to Korea. Um, mm. I met Junkie this year, and yeah, he's sick. I don't know. Korea. <laughs> All right, there we go. Korea, yeah. <laughs> uh, Adam Zer, favorite up-and-coming Aussie skater, favorite street spot in Australia? Louis. Louis who? Louis G. <laughs> Louis G? Louis. Louis, he's, he's in like, uh, he's in the montage in Chapter 2. He's just like, yeah, incredible. Great, great skater. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Favorite spot? Favorite street spot in Australia? City Square, Down Ledge. What's that? Uh, actually, no, State Library. Really? State Library. Why? Because yeah. it's like the State Library. <laughs> where you go to learn. <laughs> really? That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> okay. That's it. It's like, yeah. But where can you skate there besides like the book? Just the book? Yeah, just the book. Okay. Just the bank. Dion had a cover on Box Mag on that thing. Did he? I didn't realize that. Yeah, Mr. Self Destruct. Gav, what's your favorite film section of yours? I'm guessing he's asking what's your favorite oh. section. Like, um, they're all different. I yeah, um, Volley Five was a special one for me. If what? I ever had a goal in skating, mm-hmm. that was it. It was like try your best to do a part and put it out on the biggest platform that you saw that was the most legitimate. And mm. I felt like that was I got the opportunity. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got the opportunity to do that, and then That's everything it. else after that's bonus. You know, cool. Yeah. Uh, um, he also asked what your favorite section of all time in general is. Anything in particular? Okay. Cannot do that. that. that that's, that's a tough one. That might take <laughs> yeah. a while. So many. Yeah. Favorite, I don't know. Uh, no. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I we're going to do le- I remember feeling great about Shima's second section in Coup d'etat. Second oh, section? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was might have just the, been like the pump, Smashing Pumpkins one, right? Yeah, it might have just been the way he, he just like. <laughs> felt happy after landing, <laughs> landing some handrails. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, ah. Oh, good feeling. Really yeah. good vibes that. Yeah. We're going to leave it at that for now. So cool. we're, we're at the two hour mark. Um, but yeah, thank you for everybody for tuning in this week and watching with us. We hope everyone had a good holiday weekend. Mm-hmm. And yeah. thank you, Gav, for coming out. Thank dude, you, guys. Thanks so much. Yeah. This was awesome, dude. It really thanks, was rad. Yeah, we're we're, we're going to answer more. Um, at least there's other questions here, but we'll answer them on the IG stories afterwards. Sure. Yeah. Cool. So sure. we'll still, we'll still get to them and, uh, make sure to follow us too on Instagram for that reason alone. Always. Yeah. Uh, YouTube yeah. subscribe to us and our Facebook, check out our Patreon page. If you want to be yeah. grateful and donate to us. We're very appreciative of everyone mm-hmm. who's we're helped just us along the way. We're just going to put it toward pizza to feed in our guests. That's yeah. It. Pizza that's, where, pizza that's where it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Cool. And we'll see Thank you all in the next episode. Thank you everybody. Thank you.